Uh, you recording? Yeah. Yeah. I'm recording. Videos recording. And a three, and a two, and a <laughs> wait, <God> one. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Three, and, and a two, wait, and a three, four, two, one. Three, four, oh. three, two, one, clap. Three, two, one. Remark, get ready, set, go right clap. now. Clap. <laughs> Well, hello there. Happy holidays and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? I do! The excitement of walking down the aisles, browsing the names and the artwork, and finally picking out the movie you're going to take home with you. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era in streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your house. But there was something truly special about Traveling through the seven levels of the candy cane forest, yes. past the sea of twirly, swirly gumdrops, <laughs> and then walking into Blockbuster <laughs> to, to, to pick a movie out by hand. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte, and joining me as always, two cotton-headed ninny is <laughs> Sean Pryor and AJ Benz, how the heck are ya? We're not cotton-headed headed ninny muggins okay we're just special Muggin. feeling the spirit yeah feeling the spirit i hate the spirit but i'm feeling it <laughs> it, d- it doesn't mean you have to like it but it's there yeah i uh, know i it's just hey here's joy i'm like no well you're quite literally wearing it on your sleeve <laughs> yes sean and your entire shirt thank you so i you know hey i want to dress nice you did the sunglasses thing yeah for blues brothers i'm doing this hey you got that bolo tie. It's just wrangling in the spirit, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Get on up. Get, Get on, on now. <laughs> well, boys, on this episode, we finish up Christmas season with one of the more popular Christmas movies of the last two decades, a movie featuring Will Ferrell in his first leading role, Yeah. a movie that thankfully never attempted to make a sequel. Thank <laughs> you, Will Ferrell, for turning that down. Well, they attempted. <laughs> Voted on directly by our Patreon members. We are, of course, talking about 2003's. <laughs> Elf. Elf. It's Wednesday morning. It's early. Way too early for you. You're probably sitting in traffic, like me. Why not have your coffee and bacon with the confused breakfast boys? Good morning, boys. Morning. Damn, dang it. Well, like I said, this movie was chosen by our Patreon members in a five movie poll. Elf. Took 31% of the Christmas movie vote, just nudging out Jingle All the Way and Scrooged. Mm. Wow. Damn. A lot of people were pulling for those two, but Elf did take it. Uh, Gremlins had 16%. Surprisingly, Home Alone 2 only had 7%. That is surprising. That's shocking. That is shocking. I know it's (laughs) it's a popular debate, and I think you guys have told me, but I think Home Alone 2 is my favorite of them. I think you guys disagree, but that's fine. I mean, I don't, I don't say you're wrong. I disagree. But oh, okay. I don't say you're wrong. Yeah, you can have your opinion, but it's wrong, and you yeah, know, that's it. No, if, yeah. If you have an opinion about this, which is also wrong, the right. only way to help is to join the Patreon, voting on upcoming movies like we just did here. Bonus weekly audio content, private Discord server, and more. This is the direct way that you can enjoy this free content that you get every single week. But if you want to support us and keep us moving into the next stratosphere, this is the way you do it. You get extra perks for a little bit of money a month. Patreon.com slash Confused Breakfast. Uh, we already have three incredible movie votes set up, chosen, ready to be released in the next couple months that you wait. get to be a part of. And they are all awesome. Yes. If you are new to this podcast, we will be reviewing this movie with a modern eye. But in order to do that properly, we must first discuss it with that Christmas holiday nostalgia spirit of the first time you ever saw it. So, AJ, you got to tell us the first time you saw this movie what your nostalgic rating is. I've never seen it. (laughs) Something about, like, so Christmas is my favorite time of year. Like, I try try to think of the best way to say it, but for me, there's Christmas time, and then there's just any other time. That's just the way it is for me, okay? I love it. You're allowed allowed that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, He's allowed that. So, but then then again, I also, like, my, my holiday movies are very coveted. So... 
I, I'm I'm all about those Christmas classics, if you will. And so when there's these new holiday movies <laughs> getting released <laughs> onto the scene, you think you're good as Christmas Story? Yeah, Christmas with the Cranks. You think you're gonna come on in and you're gonna drop it? Yeah, Christmas with the Cranks. <laughs> Bad Santa. <laughs> It's Turns a, out Christmas is not the way they yeah, planned it. It's, it's a Christmas story meets Home Alone. It's like what? Why does I? How do you even compare those? Well, <laughs> we're gonna take it and flip it on its head because it's Christmas. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know, but that's the thing is I get like you get almost protective of like your Christmas movies. You know what I mean? Okay. okay. And so when Elf came out, I didn't want to watch it. No, I agree. I didn't want to watch it at all. I I was like no. Will Ferrell, oh cool, oh great, let's put a tall guy who's dressed as an elf on the cover. And <laughs> Ooh, can you get the joke already? <laughs> <laughs> mm. He's a nice guy. It's a <laughs> so that's my, <laughs> that's my problem, though. <laughs> and so I didn't see this for a long time until um, <laughs> TBS. <laughs> I get in for the holidays at TBS. And we flip between this and like the game. Whatever it is during Fuck the yeah. holiday, Michael. Oh, uh, I thought you meant the movie. <laughs> no, no, just whatever. You know, you know the big game. I should have known. Ooh, ooh! Did you guys catch the big game? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, or Christmas Story, 24 Hours, right? Yes. And then this came on, and I, and like I saw bits and pieces, and then I saw Zoe Deschanel, and then I saw yes. um, Mary Steenberg, and oh, I, so, I so, you like know, fine. yeah. Um, and, and I was just, I was, I was in, I was hooked at that point, And then I was excited to watch it again when it came on inevitably again on TBS. So anyways, guys, going to give this a big old 7.2, nice. 7.2 nostalgically for AJ. Sean, what about you? Can I tell Steve Kuzer? Um, <laughs> Kuzer. I saw this movie with my stepmom in Illinois, uh, back when it came out, um, 2003, right? Yeah. Anyway. Yes. yes. Uh, so I saw it with her. I think she was just my brother was off doing something else, and she's like, "I have I don't know what to do with this guy. I know he likes movies, so <laughs> I'll take him to a fucking movie." Here's a movie. He's got a trench um, coat on. All movies are the same. Just put one on. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so I watched me and her watch. Tell this. him no one's seen this before. <laughs> 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 this is the first time anybody's ever. Oh watched my god, it. you got to see it. Nobody's seen it, but <laughs> um, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed the hell out of it. She she thought it was cute. I didn't know that was the first time I ever heard someone refer to something as cute. Uh. That was an inanimate object. Um, <laughs> I, guess, I guess it's moving. Um, I thought it was fun. <laughs> I thought when he get hits by the get gets hit by the taxi, it was fucking awesome. <laughs> and so I'm a seven. Seven well. for Sean. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of agree to him with both of you guys. Like I never thought there was actually gonna be a good new Christmas movie. Right. Because then this is when like Hallmark was starting to come. It's like okay, we've the classics are the only way. Please, you know? but I agree. The first time I saw this, I was like, "Yep, <laughs> okay." Yeah. I think we even did the same thing to my dad. We're like, "Dad, you have to watch this." He's like, "I'm not gonna watch that." <laughs> and then and then you like walk in the house next Christmas, and he's already watching. Yeah. You're going, "Oh, uh, yeah." Good recommendation. You, you guys know? like this one, right? <laughs> I just wanted to put it on for you. <laughs> I I, lo I was a big Will Ferrell fan from Saturday Night Live, so yeah. I was way into this. Call it an eight for me, nostalgically. Wow. Yeah. So our executive producer for this episode, Josh Miller, we love you. Thank you so much for being a part of this crew. You, uh, you're the best, man. You're the best around. Uh, mm. The best around. Josh Miller, executive producer, says, This one will be pretty easy and being reasonably new and regularly watched. I don't think my score will change much. Generally speaking, this is a well-liked movie. While some may not love it, I just don't know anybody that says they hate it. If there are some that do, they're just looking for attention yes. and to be contrary. Kind of like saying <laughs> Die Hard's a Christmas movie. You know, yeah. You're just looking oh for attention. Fucking right. God. Again, I don't, I don't know what the right answer is. I'm getting it in while I can. I love this thing. I have a feeling we're going we're gonna to lose this battle. Uh, but looking back, I'm one of those ones that liked it from day one. It's certainly not an all-time favorite of mine, but it's definitely top 50 overall. Probably top 20 in comedies. What could you really dislike wow. about it? It's certainly a plausible story, unless you think Santa isn't real. <laughs> Will Ferrell was at his peak here. Frankly, he's always good, occasionally great, and rarely bad. I'm looking at you, Holmes and Watson. <laughs> the rest of the cast, which is stacked with quality supporting talent, drives this movie along at a great pace. It's not a quotable as many of his movies. I'm looking at you, Talladega Nights. But it has some heavy hitters for me, like Bye, Mr. Norwell. Uh, we elves have stick to the four elf food groups. Best part is, like Farrell, I'm really tall, 6'5", and never been considered for any elf-like roles, even the <laughs> grublets on ice. I'm looking at you, Blades of Glory. <laughs> In the end, this movie is great, always has been. 
Hopefully always will be after watching it with a critical eye. So nostalgically, he's given it a 7.765. Josh is on my train. So nostalgically, that is a 7.49 for us as a group. Nice. Um, which, you know, that's going to be top 30. That's actually going to come in right at number 30. It's wow. just below Hook, just above Ernest Scared Stupid. Wow, okay. Wow. Yeah, again, doesn't really mean much nostalgically, but that shows you where it stacked up on all the movies that we did. Well done, Josh. We that was uh, beautiful. I love that. Beautiful. <laughs> that was. So we're going to strip away that nostalgia. We begin with Sean. He hooks us up with all the pertinent, important details that we never bothered to learn the first time we watched this movie. <laughs> Who cares, uh-huh. right? Sean, what do you got, man? <laughs> Todd. <laughs> Sean, tell us what we don't care about. <laughs> no, back then <laughs> we didn't care. Now you guys are just on your phones. But I'd... now we do. Yeah, whatever. AJ, check out this. Take it away, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, produced by Todd Kamernicki. Yep. Have I got your attention? What? Yeah. <laughs> Sean Robertson and John Berg. Burr. Written by David Berenbaum, mm. edited by Dan Lebenthal, <laughs> cinematography by Greg Gardner, also did Orange County, the Jack Black movie. I like that movie. Uh, Men in Black 2, Son of the Mask, oh gosh. Ooh. Oh, yeah. no. Uh, he redeemed himself with 10 Things I Hate About You. Mm, okay. uh, directed by John Favreau. Cast, Will Ferrell, Zoe Deschanel, James Caan, Rob, Bob Newhart, Faison Love, yeah. Mary Steenburgen, Artie Lang, Kyle Gass, Andy Richter, and Peter Dinklage. The Dink. The okay. Easy. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what I call him. Writer David Brennenbaum <laughs> wrote first wrote the script in 1993, and some and had some interest was gained when the story was passed around Hollywood. The script underwent uncredited rewrites, and after the script became much darker. Writing duo Adam McKay and Will Farrell got hold of the script and did their own rewrites. Initially, Terry Zweigoff was offered the directing duties for the film, but turned it down to do Bad Santa instead. Ah. John Favreau came on board, but did not like that the script was so dark. Getting influenced by the Rake and Bass films, Favreau rewrote the script to, to be more of a PG homage to those movies. Can I just say, is, uh, is John F- Favreau, is he just like maybe one of the most like prolific directors of like current times and this was essentially like one of his first movies that yeah. he got to direct and and write yeah i mean you 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 see his career as an actor from like swingers of course maybe. and movies like that yeah and then he's getting into directing with like this movie and then he starts the fucking mcu yeah <laughs> It's, I just, it's like, like insane. Oh, Elf was pretty good. Here, do this. You just hear him <laughs> and you see him every now and again, and you're just like, wait, wait, that guy directed all of this and did all of this? It's amazing. It's I great. Know, I love him. Chris Farley and Jim Carrey were in, were first in line for the role <laughs> of Buddy, but time had passed for the two of them by the time the film was made. Can you imagine Some more Chris Farley in this role? Yeah. 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 Chris Farley, I, he, I could... This would be a different movie, It'd but different it would movie. be it probably the same. I mean, back in 1993, he was like those guys were like the Wolf Barrels. Yeah, that's back, back in the day. Yeah, coming off the Saturday Night Live train and everything, and <laughs> yeah. you're right, it would have been a completely different movie. Wanda Sykes was originally cast as the Gimbal store manager, but dropped <laughs> out. Favre was interested in working with Will Ferrell on his first post NSL movie, so the actor was cast. Chevy Chase was considered for the role of Papa Elf, but Will Ferrell vetoed this idea immediately because nice. Chevy Chase is a fucking asshole. Nice. Mm. Thank you, Will. Uh, filming big... I can't stress enough. Like, anytime he's brought up, I can't stress enough how many s- horrible stories I've heard of that fucking asshole. Like, the unfortunate thing about Chevy Chase is he has provided incredible joy in roles. Undeniable in screen presence. Undeniable. Yeah. And you love to watch him. Yep. Yes. But you hate to hear the stories. Yes. Yeah. It's like when uh, keep, people keep bringing it up on our uh, TikTok about The Shining, about how they they mistreated um, the Shelley Duvall. Shelley Duvall. And like that is a major tarnishment to yes, that movie. It is. 100%. It sucks that that is just not in like not in the movie and we're hearing about that afterwards, but that tarnishes it. There's a whole and this tarnishes Chevy Chase. There's a whole separate the artist from the artist thing, but it's it's... Sometimes it bleeds over and it's hard yeah, to forget about really it. It's really hard to do sometimes. Filming began on December 9th, 2002 and wrapped on March 7th, 2003. Filming took place mostly in New York City with certain shots being filmed in Vancouver and Coquitlam, British Columbia. Elf was released on November 7th, ni- uh, sorry, 2003 and on a budget of $33 million, the film would go on to make $225.1 <laughs> million and serves as yet another <laughs> essential Christmas <laughs> viewing. <laughs> You did good. You did all right. I mean, like, we we can get to it more at the end. 
<laughs> when we get to the end and our end thoughts. But this movie is now one of those movies. It stands yeah. next to Christmas oh, yeah. Story and all of those movies. It is. Yeah. You bet. Well, we know you have at least one friend who loves this movie as much as you do. Maybe your brother, your sister, your dad, your mom. You grew up watching this. You got to share this episode with them because they're going to love to hear our overall analysis on there's a little share icon on your podcast. Flip it over to them. Say, listen to these guys. They're super cool. Yep. Rawr, hey. <laughs> Do that in a text, though. I just spell that out. Oh. Sharing is one of the best ways you can support us. And obviously, don't forget to go to our website after this, confusedbreakfast.com. Show all of our ratings for the movies. Buy T-shirts, stickers, all that fun stuff. I think it's going to be a good time. Oh, are you going to go to the website you there, can, Sean? You can just share. You can just, hey, say share. Oh, you share. just go send that to my mom. Say share, and I'm going to send it to my mom right Burp. now. Hey, mom. <laughs> okay, up next, we got to talk about the ratings and reviews from critics and fans alike. That's where AJ comes in and hooks us up. Let's. What do we got, man? What are the favorite colors of Christmas? I think it's green and, and red. red. Like the, the t- tomato meter. <laughs> Gross. It's not green. It is very red. Wow. It is 85% certified fresh wow. on the tomato meter, critically. Is, of all the movies we've done, that is number 26 on our list. Um, just to put it into perspective, that is not as good as Tremors. Definitely. But slightly oh. better than The Shining. Oh, okay. <sighs> Fuck, man. No, that makes perfect sense, I guys. almost had a win there. <laughs> I feel like they're wrong on both those, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, it doesn't really stack up to Tremors. We just sort of flip those <laughs> to go Shining, Elf, Tremors. Wait, so they but think Tremors is better than The Shining? This in, elf is an 85%. The critics think Tremors is an 86%, and The Shining is 84 <laughs> Fuck, man. You know who's not right? Critics. Critics. <laughs> most of the time. Raj. You know who is right? Fans. I'll be honest with you. Apparently, audiences didn't think it was even as good uh, collectively. 79% from the audience score wow. uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, IMDb is a big old seven. That yep. is our 11th movie. <laughs> that is nearly probably 10 to 15% of the movies we've done have been a seven. <laughs> the dreaded seven rating <laughs> on IMDb. The most mediocre movies we review we eh. must be the most media- mo- mediocre podcast out yep. there. I think. I think the... I think the new thing for that, uh, for a, a movie that's a seven on IMDb, is is just going to be, hmm, that's a pretty good movie. Done. <laughs> that's it. Uh, real quick, let's everybody be quiet. Give us a sound bite. Hmm, it seems like a pretty good movie. <laughs> Done. There it is. <laughs> we won't. We will literally. We'll, you'll just go seven, and I'll hit the button, and then we move. We on. move on. We, cool. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> just like a wimp, 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 wimp. <laughs> done deal uh let's see some critics said uh the hollywood reporter um uh, gave it an 80 out of 100 while the words instant holiday classic might be pushing it elf is at the very least a breezily entertaining perfectly cast family treat uh, Kevin Carr at Film Threat. Get out of here. I imagine there's got to be like explosions yeah. or something for Film film Threat. A little lightning strike. Yeah, 70 out of 100, Kevin Carr. He said, if you're not a fan of Will Ferrell, you ain't going to like this film. But if you think he's funny and you don't mind a sappy ending, this is a decent holiday flick. What go. holiday movie doesn't have a sappy ending? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, no, even Bad Santa had it. Yeah. What about that ro- killer robot movie, Sean? <laughs> oh, uh, well. actually, you know what? The the record store burned down, so it, it was sad for me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. uh, uh, let's do some ten out of tens from uh, the fans. I like to think of these in like the commercial standpoint of like when they're like popping them onto the screen, uh, and they say, "J Money Mills gave it a ten out of ten, an instant <laughs> classic Christmas movie." Just the blurbs. J Money Mills. <laughs> Sixty nine four twenty. <laughs> J Money Mills gave it ten out of ten. I don't know that kind of shit. Um, such a great original Christmas story that brings the Christmas spirit. Farrell crushes this role as Buddy the Elf. His energy is enough to carry the whole film. You right. You right. Uh, another ten out of ten. Perfect modern Christmas movie. Said Stephen Lamb. Uh, great for all ages. It's in the permanent Christmas rotation with a Christmas story for Christmases, trading places, and just friends. Anyone who rated this less than a 10 is a cotton-headed ninny muggins. Wow. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go to a 1 out of 10. I'm going to be disappointed. S- slightly longer, but that's okay. Because it's 1 out of 10. Uh, Cody Dietrich said, This is why I refuse to watch Will Ferrell movies. Mm-hmm. They play this movie. Uh. 
they played this movie senior year in high school. They took a vote to see what movie to show for the seniors, and this is the movie that got selected. <laughs> like at their graduation? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it wasn't uh, even Christmas. Hey, seniors, we know you really don't want to be here, but uh, <laughs> we're going to have a movie. They're, like, There's a huge arena full of people in their gowns and caps, yeah. and they're just like, okay, and now Elf. <laughs> <laughs> it's June. <laughs> it's like yeah my senior year in high school yeah what is he talking i don't it know doesn't matter. i love the no context of it doesn't matter um one uh, time i watched this <laughs> i was in high school <laughs> they said they played the senior year in high school Martha uh, wouldn't give me a hand job yeah let's <laughs> try I didn't even get any. I didn't. I, didn't, my, I, didn't I, I, I was there. I put in the time. She didn't even give me any. <laughs> they wheeled in the TV, and we were sitting in the back, and they turned off the light. Where are we going? I with don't this? know. That was my fault. I'm I sorry. love it. No, let's How go. There you guys. Uh, I watched a bit of it, and then acted like I had to go to the bathroom and left. <laughs> <laughs> because it was absolutely terrible. Move. Yeah, it's like because I'm a senior. <laughs> Man, uh, I miss those days. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, it was absolutely terrible. This is one of the worst movies of any genre or theme I have ever seen. Fuck you. Will, Fer- <laughs> Will Ferrell makes Adam Sandler look like a very serious dramatic actor. He is. He I've does seen, do those. I've seen shows aimed at toddlers that are not as over the top and ridiculous as Will Ferrell is in this movie. Are you calling movies shows now? Are You yeah. not, You don't seem like a senior in high school. You seem like a senior in a senior living home. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no. Ooh, got him. <laughs> no. Huh? Calm down, right, calm down. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> in, in a free funeral home, <laughs> you bet? Yeah, that's what I mean. If I went there, I would have got it. You would have got, yeah, got it. Oh, yeah. dang it. Uh, there's no tag team for that belt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing got, nothing got good about this movie. He said God about this movie. Yep. The storyline is true. terrible. And... Acting is is bad. The entire film is horrible. Uh, I just I consider this to be the worst movie I have ever seen. And considering so many have said that this is Will Ferrell's best film, I refuse to even consider watching anything else he has been in. So he hasn't watched any other Will Ferrell movies. Nope. Anchorman. If you if you if you've lived your entire life and you haven't seen Step Brothers, yeah. you're doing a disservice to the entire world. That's another movie that I put off for a long time, but I said, okay, I'll give it a chance, and I enjoyed it. <laughs> it's, Weird. It's, oh. Oh, so strange. Undeniable. Oh, but just fun movies are fun. Oh. Yeah. Um, Mary Steenburgen is in that. Yeah, see? Yeah. Uh, I will give you guys one last one. This is a 10 out of 10, uh, but I think it's a great way to end this, honestly. Um <laughs> I don't like it, but my dad worked on it. (laughs) (laughs) What's the rating? 10 out of 10. Okay, okay, all right. Keep your dad working. So I know someone who worked on this. (laughs) Uh, Apparently, warning spoilers. Uh, My dad, Jeremy Otto, we'll have to look him up. Yeah, I'll give him props. Right now, please. Jeremy Otto, O D D O, worked on it. I don't like this movie, but he did the special effects, which is cool. Uh, So, yeah, he said that. So yeah, uh, he actually so, wrote that. Uh, so yeah. Also, it makes me super uncomfortable. Very iconic movie. I don't like it when he goes into the female shower room, though. It is very creepy. <sighs> Jeremy Otto is a visual effects supervisor. There you go. He's done movies like The Crazies, The F- The Fountain, uh, Into the Blue, and Blade Trinity. Jeremy Otto, big fan of your work. Jeremy Otto, open invitation for you to be a guest on this show, but you can't bring your shit ass. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate that son of a bitch anyway. Yeah, I hate my kid anyway. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> well, that. thanks, Age. We are seconds away from reviewing this classic movie, scene by scene with a modern eye. But that's first, me. we got to talk about the best whiskey in the entire world, Cedar Ridge Whiskey. Yeah. Made right here in our backyard in Swisher, Iowa. It's the number one whiskey in Iowa, making its way across the country, around the world. I don't know about you guys, but my whiskey consumption goes up. During the wintertime, Molly bought me an advent calendar where every day you pull a vial of whiskey out and, no and you try it. Like, <laughs> That's awesome. My wife knows me well. Yeah. Uh, so far, none have honestly, I'm like nine days in, none have actually compared yeah. to the whiskeys that are made at Cedar Ridge. They're great whiskeys from around the world, but like this whiskey is so good. It, it It's that warm blanket that we all want, that we talk about like with these movies. 
Christmas nostalgia. It's like it all wraps together in whiskey for me. Uh, I'll have to do dry January probably after this because yeah. It's just the way it goes. So you guys have to try Cedar Ridge if you haven't. If you're in Iowa or the Midwest, you can probably get some at your local liquor store. Walk in and go, do you have Cedar Ridge whiskey? Where's like, Cedar what? Ridge? Then it'd be like, you have to get it. And make a huge scene and then politely leave or maybe buy something else. Put your yeah. hand in your coat pocket too and be like, where's the Cedar Ridge? Yeah. yeah. Do that. Just try fun. that. Just Christian Bale. We didn't say to do that. No, we yeah. did not. No. no. We don't where's the Cedar Ridge? We don't endorse that. <laughs> If you if they don't have it and you've made a scene and you've asked them nicely, go to CedarRidgeWhiskey.com. You can order some straight to your door. Not all states, but you should at least give it a shot. If you can't get it that way, travel to Iowa. We'll meet you at Cedar Ridge. We'll have pizza. We'll do the tour together. Mm -hmm. It'll be a good time. We recommend the flagship bourbon if you're making like craft cocktails. The quintessential American single malt if you're looking for that neat kind of fancy drink. Mm. Um, honestly... It's the best. We are so thankful they support this podcast. They help make this free, and they help us pushing this content out. So if you guys can support them, it supports us directly. So Slipknot, fuck yeah. Pulse yep. of the maggots. Mm -hmm. CedarRidgeWhiskey.com. Please drink responsibly. CedarRidgeWhiskey.com. CedarRidgeWhiskey.com. Well, boys, we don't belong where we are now. No one appreciates or loves us because they are completely intolerant and unwilling to accept people who are different from them. Yeah. They sit on a throne of lies. High school, yeah. So we must leave on a journey to a new land where we will hopefully find people who share our affinity for elf culture. <laughs> no matter what happens, we will stick to our motto. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for, for all, all to hear. hear. Here we go. Santa! 30 years prior to the events of this film, a baby crawls into Santa's sack at an orphanage. Santa unwillingly takes the baby back to the North Pole where it's decided that Papa Elf will raise him. The baby named Buddy is raised unaware that he is actually a human until his enormous size and poor toy making abilities cause Papa Elf to tell him the truth. The old elf reveals that Buddy was born to Walter Hobbs and Susan Wells and placed up for adoption that Walter never knew Buddy was born and that he now works at a children's book company in New York. I'm going to take this time to immediately appreciate Bob Newhart. Yes. Okay. Mm. I'm a big fan. Yes. Big, fa big fan. He is the only person who, in my opinion, who does what he does in the way that he does it. This dry delivery, this just stone-faced, just awesomeness that he provides. And I know we talked about Chevy Chase possibly being this character and how yes. different that, I just think about how different it could have been it wouldn't um, have that that, that warmth, I think, that Bob brings. Like, Definitely. Bob, you can like you almost feel this is real the way he's portraying it. Can like, you give me? I know I'm the film of, of the podcast, but can you give me what else he is in? Bob Newhart. Yeah, it was the the show, the TV show, right? Isn't that what he was known for? Yeah, the Bob Newhart show. Okay, um, I can give you a couple other things, uh, but he that's uh, that's uh, the Rescuers Down Under. Yeah, I'm not Rescu familiar. They're the Rescuers. It's the Disney. He plays. I know what you're talking uh, about. He plays one of the mice. Okay. Uh, Bob Newhart does. Oh, you're does. right. Uh, but Rescuers Down Under is like a huge one for me yeah, that yeah. he is in. But but he is a voice actor in that. The the, the movies um, was his big deal. Or sorry, the TV show was I think his, okay. his real big deal. Yes. Because I I'm not familiar with him at all, and so I'm glad you say that he has more of a dry delivery on most yeah. of the things that he says 100%. because I was like, this guy is sleepwalking through this entire fucking movie. I think that's his style. Okay, it's what I'm, it is. I'm okay with that then because I was a little turned. I've always been. Every Just time I watch like, this movie, I'm like, "Why does this guy seem like?" And I'll get, I'll get to to that with another character later on in the movie. But yeah, I was just like, I don't know why I don't like this guy. But I'm I'm glad that that's kind of Bob Newhart's thing now. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's 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 his delivery. It's his shtick, you know. And I I do think it's great because um I, I and and a lot of this we'll 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 realize throughout this film going through it that a lot of the other characters are actually more dry. And yeah. more monotone yeah. to play for Will Ferrell to bounce off of. Yeah, you know that's true. Like, cause I kind of feel to bounce off of that. I feel like so Ed Asner plays Santa mm. Claus. Yeah, I, as much as I do love this movie, he might be like my least favorite Santa Claus. I was gonna really? ask about this. I, He's I, just I really sort of like, like yeah, he he does the job. Yeah, yeah. But he is he like? Would you rather have? Kurt Russell, hundred percent. Tim Allen, hundred percent. I, I mean, like it, you go down the list of Santa Claus, I'm like. Yeah, I think I'd rather. He's just kind of like, eh. I think, I think he could have been better. 
to yes, be honest. I agree. And I love Ed really? Asner. I, th- I, th- I love Ed Asner because he's so he's not ba- bad. He could have been better. Yeah. He, but he, it's his Santa Claus is so back and forth. Yes. I feel like between this, like, um, very sweet man, but then also this kind of tough guy. Yeah. And it's, it's, I, so I get this kind of, I get caught in the middle of this and I don't know what kind of Santa he is. Interesting. I never, I never really like so. dove deep on it or anything. I just kind of, yeah. I was just like, oh, Ed As- like he's, just, he looks like Santa and he's acting like Santa. I think Santa. his look is amazing. Yeah. Though. Yes. I will say that. Did, yes. How many times did it take you to watch this movie before someone either pointed it out to you or you realized that Peter Billingsley was Ming Ming, the, the main elf? I, I had probably seen this five times before that I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. It had to be pointed out to me. It, yep. It's amazing because you don't know. You, you're you lying to yourself and to me right now if you say the first time you watch that, you go, oh, that's Ralphie from Christmas Story. Yeah. Like Never in a million years would you know that unless you like read up on it or found out because... You know, you saw Ralphie in Christmas Story, and then you really didn't see him ever right. again at that point. And so totally. I think it's an amazing – I think John Favreau uh, made it a point to have a lot of callbacks in this movie. Definitely. He knew what he was doing. He that. knew exactly what he was doing, and, and just getting Peter's Billingsley to play this role yeah. just because – yeah. I think was a really cool move. Finding a finding a good place to have him in there where it's not overwhelming. Like, oh, who is that guy? It's no, he's just the he- the kind of lead elf guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you Ming know, Ming. or like yeah, like worker guy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Ming 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 <laughs> Flum Flum. <laughs> the the juxtaposition. Obviously, this is like the fish out of water, and uh, oh, he's a he's bigger than the rest of them. It is pretty fucking amazing how this is shot. And John Favreau, he was as as of nowadays, he's. For this movie, he wanted to stick very clear of any of any like CGI yes. mm. influence on this movie. So everything is pretty practical, especially with um, Will Ferrell and uh, the the elves the being other. smaller than him. It's all forced perspective. It's all right. Will Ferrell is more towards the camera, and they're all way back, and they just put you know. It's it's a very very effective right, uh, very effective look. And they pulled off so well. If watch uh, movies that made us on yeah. Netflix has has one about Elf, and it's really cool to watch because they actually show you how they did it, yeah. and you're like, Jesus, how did you do that? It's like those weird TikTok videos of like people opening a beer or something, and it turns into something else yes. before your eyes, like magic. Right. It it's literally magic, but it's just a simple kind of trick. Yes. It's, it's like so those guys effective. that paint stuff on the sidewalk that if yes. you stand in a certain exactly. place. It looks like this giant thing, but you walk over it and it's nothing. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's just a trick of the mind, and that's filmmaking to a T for me, man. It's just tricking the audience. Yeah. Go in, and they even created two sets um, of like almost all of the interior stuff that they're trying to do for the North, North yeah. Pole. So that way they would have the their, the elf actors in like the very big yes, set, yeah. but then they'd put Will, Will Ferrell over into the <laughs> small set, the small toilet, <laughs> and so like that's what they would do. And again, force perspective, you can see these ideas of like he's even on a pedestal at some points yeah. to make him seem larger than life. It's great, yeah, so good. I have yeah. a question about elf, like elf culture. You know, they he talks about how the elves could either do the three jobs, right? They three could jobs. bake cookies. They could make shoes or they go to, to the show, the big the, dance, you the know, big dance for Santa's <laughs> workshop. So my question is, let's say so we know that we know that elves can have children because, you know, the Papa Elf talks like, you know, I was so busy. I never had a chance to have children of my own, you know, on account of my sperm not being good. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> Raising Arizona. Oh, being too busy? I get you, Sean. Yes. Uh, but my question is, is let's say Papa Elf does have a kid. At some point, do they take that kid away and like send them to some elf like factory where they all determine what they're good at? Yeah. Or are they born into the job that their parents were doing? Oh boy. It seems pretty so um, you're ta- you're talking there's like elf privilege. I don't know. <laughs> so it is seems there? pretty communist <laughs> kind of <laughs> regime. Going on here. There's one overarching Jesus figure, Santa Claus, and then there's Ooh. there's a whole government system of elves. Where they take? Yeah, I just want to know. They do show they, up on your 15th birthday and they take you out of bed and like take you to a military. Do they boot camp also thing. like take? If you're a girl, do they take you to like a knitting place? Or if you're a man, we they don't take know. You to like the workshop. We don't know of the standards of the day. Some sort of Handmaid's Tale for el- elves yeah. going on here. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, guys. I just want to know. Scary. I want a prequel that explains yeah. more of what happens in the elf world. Let's make it, or you know, we can just take thirty minutes and discuss it right now. Okay, yeah. cool. Oh, good. Let's yeah. do it. Uh, so <laughs> we're gonna um, do it on Patreon, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's what that. we're gonna yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to pay to hear us say it. Yeah, <laughs> the two of my favorite um, 
things that are in this movie are the two photos that they show once he's realizing that he's a human and they're talking to him and yeah. they show they show two photos very quick they show one of the choir and his head is cut off because he's the choir's there but he's just super tall yeah. and you can't even see his head and the one of him dunking, dunking. over the elves <laughs> is the great those are the two of the greatest photos i've ever seen and is i want to be there you? it's not a prop for me okay. if somebody wants it no. but uh, like to be able to see that be recreated or how they'd like okay like dunk over the kid like, amazing i love that shit <laughs> i liked i like thinking about how when they talk to him about it it's like <laughs> the idea of we've all got special talents buddy and he, and i love it's like, well, how many did you get done today, buddy? He's like, 85. <laughs> and he should have like 1,000 done. Okay. Like, that's the elf. He's 915 like, off the pace. Yeah. <laughs> Even in 2003, who the fuck wants an Etch a Sketch anymore? Yeah. I, I pick up an Etch a Sketch. I see an Etch a Sketch yeah. at some random place, and I'm like, oh, cool. Done with it in five minutes. Yeah. So there's, there's what, 10, 10 elves there making 1,000 a day? What, what's the math on that? 100,000? Yeah. You, I could never. Ha- whatever. <laughs> so 100,000 a day. Times, are we only making etch sketches for the next year? Yeah, you got ten ten elves, a thousand each. That's a that's ten thousand, and you've got and how long are they doing? That? I what bet you, I bet you that in the world today, maybe five thousand etch sketches are sold a year, max only. Yes, max. Maybe this is why, and this is a conversation for another time. But I'm just saying, maybe this is why. Nobody fucking believes in Santa Claus anymore. Because <laughs> they're, they're not making PlayStation. Them, yeah, because he's bringing them shit toys, <laughs> and they're like, and they're like, oh god, if Santa Claus is real, he'd be actually paying attention to what the hell is the trend. I thought are. he did. I and thought he watched me when I was sleeping. He knows what I want. Yeah, he thought he, kn- he knows when I'm awake, and he knows what the hell I'm talking about. By the way, he knows when I have private time. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> <laughs> if he really knew what I wanted, <laughs> <Maybe you're laughs> some oh. butt plugs. Um, <laughs> so, like, I'm just saying, like, is oh. to try them. are there like quota? I mean, I guess there are quotas as yeah. we see, but what's it determined as? Like, if we're talking Santa specifically, if he if he knows what everyone wants, does he just make? that exact number or does he make like a, an overhead number and yeah. uh, and are are there like overhead yeah, i think so he, he stocks the factory just so he's got enough just in so case like, maybe this year you like don't know how commercial. many larges you're we're gonna have to make for right. the yeah for the shirts maybe maybe like a commercial is gonna come out all of a sudden about etch sketches and people are gonna be like oh, i want one of those right. so he's just got to have a stock yeah. he's got to be ready to roll i guess he he might have an understanding of um of like the trends, you know, he's, if he sees you when you're awake and he's, he's probably in all those meetings, it's like, guys, that just sketches are tanking this year. Yeah. This is probably the last year. It's just a downward arrow. Yeah. It's, it's like, just, no. <laughs> oh, it's just See, very, very, we were good up here and we were bad down here. 1989. We were here. Here's 2003. Nobody wants these. Things. Here's our pie chart of PlayStation statue sketches. <laughs> and this little piece is that just sketches. And Look, it's just, we, we made enough, this what? big red scary area. We made enough Rubik's cubes to fill every home in America. Yeah. Now we need etch a sketches <laughs> to do the same thing. <laughs> you just come with the house. Um, yeah. Uh, by the way, I also love though that the standard though of the elves is far beyond that of human. Yes. And I like the fact that Buddy's kind of actually somewhere in the middle, as we'll get to here in a, uh, later on, maybe the next couple of scenes. So, well, well, as we go through this, we'll talk about just the unbelievable quotability of this movie and how much of this movie has made itself into modern-day verbiage and stuff that I use in my daily life. They, there's two just from this scene alone. Uh, a lot of times, if, if I'm busy doing something and somebody asks me to do something, I'll say, not now, Arctic Puffin. <laughs> like, now I'll, Arctic I'll say that a lot. <laughs> or well, just, bye, buddy. Hope you bye. find your dad. It, every Hope day. find your dad. Which Almost is John Favreau did the voice for that. That's right. 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 <laughs> like, that's <laughs> that. Uh, like, the, the way that that sounds to me is just so freaking funny, man. Thanks, Mr. Narwhal. <laughs> Who is uh, the Frosty the Snowman? Leon. Uh, Leon Russell. Le- um, Leon right. uh, Redbone. 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 Leon Redbone. I was like, I know that voice from somewhere, and I, I had, I still have no idea who Leon Redbone is. I, I was actually, actually, yeah, he's like, I guess he's a famous older time yeah. singer, and he looked exactly like that. He yes. had the glasses and the mustache. The mustache and At the very end of the movie, he is the one duetting with Zoe Deschanel. Uh, in, that's right. In the song, he's, that's right. he's the same voice. 
very cool. A super good voice, and yeah. uh, I I just love the back when I was a cumulus nimbleus class. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> I want I want to hear him tell stories all day. Um, I just love the the kind of Rankin Bass kind of thing that John Favreau wanted in this movie. You know, incorporating Frosty the Snowman, Rudolph and the Red Nose. It's all Rudolph. Rudolph. Stuff. Yeah, it's all Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer yeah. outside in the North Pole. I but think it's to hilarious. A, to a fucking T. Like yeah. the exact outfits that they are wearing is what they were wearing in the Rankin Bass stuff. Yeah. And I guess if you watch that movies that made us, there was some they went ahead with it and did not have full permission That's to do right. it. And they had a major battle to then they were talking about reshooting everything, but with like a blue Instead of a green thing or like CGIing him to a different color, it would have been a disaster. Yeah. The only reason I think they got away with it is because it wasn't trademarked yeah. the right way tec- right. for Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. And it still isn't. Yeah. It's it wasn't copyrighted or trademarked the right way. Ouch. And so they could technically take and pull, and that's why they got away with it. That's right. Like a lot of um, movies, Night of the Living Dead has the same problem. It, like they, they copyrighted stole a lot it. from Rudolph. They, exactly. Yep. They copy <laughs> copyrighted it in the like the completely wrong way, so it's public domain, which is basically how Rankin Bass films are. They're pretty much public domain, ah. so you can do anything you want with them without any rights. Um, okay, fine. Sad. And uh, and no one has like sole property of it, and no one like has sole uh, like uh, income for it. If if anybody wants to reproduce, just or do it, create it. Yeah. Um, if you want to talk about quotes, and I don't know why it just stands out to me so hard when he says, "You know, that's the thing I wanted to talk to you about, buddy. <laughs> Your dad's on the naughty list." And it's just like, ah! <laughs> so but, important to him. But then it cuts away to it's like it's like. You're taking away the books. Uh, but, but the, the children, children love, love the books. I <laughs> <laughs> say that all the fucking time, dude. <laughs> and it's just so, love the books. But the children uh, love, love the books. Uh, I, 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 I see what you're trying to do here. You're trying to make me feel bad, but you're the one who didn't actually make the payments. So <laughs> it's like I'm James Caan. I'm, I'm pretty I'm just, dejected from this performance. Uh, I, I, <laughs> James Caan. Uh, I love him, but man, I just—it's one of my little gripes about this movie. I let me let me talk about it a little later as as okay. Buddy meets him. Sure, let's go on to scene two then. So Buddy sets out for New York to find his father. After some funny moments upon his arrival in the big city, Buddy eventually finds his father in the Empire State Building. But an incredulous Walter Hobbs has his thrown out. Guys, I have to bring this up to you: mm. the distance between the North Pole and Manhattan. Is yes. three thousand six hundred miles, mm-hmm. according oh. to Google Maps in a yeah. straight line, right? A straight line. It is. Doable. It is walkable, assuming everything's frozen, um, and we're assuming that's probably the shortest distance. So, if you were going to walk twelve to fourteen miles a day, yeah. that's a, that's a it's, it's a doable walk. Yep, that would take you two hundred and fifty to three hundred days. Okay. So this brings so, up an interesting thought because yeah. I used to think that. Buddy went on like making toys for a long time and being a toy tester up until about like a month before Christmas. And then he just walked there in a day. Right. I think this happened like the day after Christmas. Yeah. And then he like went through about a week period of wondering what he was going to do. And then it took him 300 days to get to New York, like at the beginning of December. Yes. It was a. It's a. Full year later, yeah, it just, of him wa- literally walking for a year. <laughs> Is, am I correct? In this? It has I, to be. I think so. <laughs> I I just like because we it, we've kind of established in this movie that elves are like a special breed and they can kind of transcend. They don't really die. They don't really get sick. You know that kind of thing. Live a long time. Right, long but time. humans are just you know like yeah. He says his dad is like two hundred fifty years old or something like that, and but humans aren't. Right, and so what. It, Buddy is different. He needs to rest. How probably. is he not frozen to death? How did he find like little tribes along the along the way? A little right. like little like maybe camps setting up set up to like climb the Alps. I don't know. You know, and and we know from other Santa Claus movies that they have the ELFS squadrons. Right, you know, right. like uh, yeah. why didn't they just fly him to New York? Yeah. Why didn't Santa just fly him to New York? Why didn't just drop him off? Yeah, you know, the, the Lord elves with out. attitude could have flown him there. Come exactly. On. Yeah. See, straight out of the North Pole. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I completely agree with you. I, I like to think that he is there actually on the next Christmas. Yes, not 
this Christmas. So a whole movie took place in between him leaving the North Pole. Correct. I want to see that. I want to see that survival of Buddy the Elf. It's the Gray. Yes. (laughs) It's basically. (laughs) It's him. Him just surviving wolf attacks for a year. He's just Bear Grylls. He fought off a raccoon or whatever the hell that was. Yeah, he did. I'd like to think that when he, after making this journey, when he shows up 300 days later after fighting wolves, he's a changed person. Yeah. I don't think he's the same happy buddy go luck. <laughs> yes. I think he's like, I'm going to kill my dad. <laughs> oh, yeah. For making me do this he's trip. Like, and I then I'm going to go back to the North Pole and kill Santa. Yeah. yeah. For making me think I was an elf for Man. this long. Directed by John Carpenter. Awesome. Oh, oh, yeah. I want that movie. I want that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love when he gets to New York, though. It's it, the whole fish out of water thing I'm a sucker for. And like his dad says, don't or someone says, don't eat the gum off the street. Peep show. The it way, says peep show. The it way he looking at Christmas presents. Yeah. <laughs> the, the way Will Ferrell performs those kinds of bits is why you watch this movie. I love when he's picking the gum off like the the subway railing or whatever, Ooh. and he's like, mm. like he gets excited <laughs> that he finds some more underneath. You know, <laughs> All, a lot of that stuff. A lot of even the stuff in the very in, when he finally gets to New York. This montage. This whole montage. It was honestly some of the last stuff that they shot. Oh, okay. Uh, and they they did it with Jean, John Far- Favreau, Will Ferrell, and a cameraman. And they would go up to people and be like, hey, here's like some money. Will you just be an extra? Yeah. Will you sign will, this document? Will you say it, do this, and so we can be have you just so we can shoot this? Like when he's getting his shoes cleaned or yeah. when he's taking the, the, flyers. the flyers and like the Santa you. Claus was a dude walking around looking like that. Yeah. Oh, wow. The guy in the red suit. <laughs> yeah. Or the guy waving at the, for the taxi. <laughs> I love that. Bye. <laughs> hey, I love yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> All that stuff. And it's just, I like to think of them just running around with their camera in New York city and just like, Hey, will you do this? Guys. Well, you can, you can tell. Cause like a lot of the shots are like, let's have them. So we don't show as many people as possible. Like, especially the rail and picking the gum yeah yeah it's like kind of at an angle so you're seeing like the skyline in- instead of instead like the of whole sidewalk shot. yeah yeah, yeah I that, love the it. where he did the, you did it world's best cup of coffee <laughs> it's very reminiscent i was thinking of uh we landed on the moon yeah, like, yeah. Dumb and like, <laughs> oh, yeah. we did it <laughs> we landed on the moon it's like you did it world's best cup world, of coffee world's best cup of coffee <laughs> and it, it's this idea that he is it's like childlike wonder or or like it, it, incredulous like feelings of just like everything is awesome oh my gosh you did it or taking everything at face value and being like oh the world's best cup of coffee in this like weird little diner type thing. yeah you know and that's i love that aspect of his character that's why um, he's so good in this movie yeah. is because he plays it like a little kid experiencing things yes the whole movie he plays it that way when he gets but he gets hit by the car on the way oh to Gimbal's. Oh, my God. Gets me every time. Like, oh, like I forget it's happening I almost do too. every time. <laughs> I know. It's, it's so, so funny. Yeah. I d- yeah. He- because the whole time you're comfortable with him just walking around no, being great. jovial. Oh, yeah. he's going to Gimbal's. Yeah. And then la- I love the reference later. He's like, the yellow ones don't stop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think, think about Will Ferrell, his career at this point. He was on Saturday Night Live from 95 to 2002. Okay. Like really starting to carve a name out for himself to where he was becoming a household name. But he hadn't really, he had made all these like... Um, just kind of cameo, cameo appearances. And then he did Night of the Roxbury. Nobody cared about that movie well, i love that movie. okay well you know what i mean like <laughs> most people were just like mm, yeah fine. oh it happened yeah it happened uh but then like i think he started filming this as he was also filming old school mm, yes but old school came out uh after in february 21st 2003 and then elf came out november 7th uh, I see, I see. so when when old school came out the production company was like oh my god we got a star on our hands yeah and so they wanted to like make a bunch of changes to the movie, but they're like, no, this is the movie. This is how we're going to do this. We're right. not going to turn this into old school as an elf. Right. They pretty much <laughs> wanted to do that. Yeah. They, yeah. They, like make it more raunchier, yeah. maybe, or like, oh, yeah. Let's Turns out he, he he's loves a truckers. Truck. Yeah. The, the scene where he gets drunk with the guy in the mailroom happens 20 times. 20 yeah. times. <laughs> and then funny. he goes streaking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Then he goes streaky. Hey, let's add a streaking part. Uh, Pull your pants down. Yeah. (laughs) I love it, though, because this really was, uh, if you think of 2003 being a rocket ship year for Will Ferrell, it's it's the year for him. Like, if he looks back, I mean, that was when he became Will Ferrell, the movie star. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, 
where we finally see him and he gets to the Empire State Building, right? Yep, yep. And um, and how many times have you ever wanted to do this where you yes. just get into the elevator? Just <laughs> <laughs> Dude, can you imagine how long that would oh, take? That guy must have been pissed. <laughs> what? But, that, but what an idiot move. Like, yeah. there's mul- th- this is a big building. There's multiple elevators. Yeah. You get out on the yeah, next just floor just get out. and then wait for another one. No kidding. <laughs> Sorry, I can't stay. It was really good talking to you. Oh, I forgot to give you a hug. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, love when he, I love when he gets there, though. The, the, he's got so many more floors to go. Yeah. Still, and you can see it's still going up. Because yeah, what did he push? Did he push like the top one yeah. almost? Yeah, well, he pushed all of them. Well, but where? What floor was the guy going to originally? Oh, true, true. I don't remember. I think what it was, was yeah. towards the top. I don't. I don't know if he said, but uh, I gosh, now I'm trying to think, but I I can't remember. But uh, and uh, by the way, apparently that major light board of buttons doesn't exist in no. the Empire State Building. Very sad fact, actually, yeah. to find out. I was. Uh, a little disheartened by that. Yeah, I don't think I want to visit New York ever again. No, if I can't do that, then what's <laughs> if all I for? If I can't do that in the Empire State Building, yeah. what is, what what's, are we doing? What's with this all been here? about? Um, I think uh, when he gets there, though, and they think he's a he's a, a Christmas gram or a, a just hey, just for reference, he put the guy pushed the fourth from the top. But uh, <laughs> is, is, is where he's the guy, got a ways to go. He's got a long ways to go. In fact, when he gets off the elevator, he's got he's got a very long way to go. Okay, continue. <laughs> um, I like the Christmas Graham thing and um, the the girl who plays Deb. Yes, she's great. What's her she, name? Uh, here, I'm going to look that up for she, you because she's uh, from Strangers with Candy is what yes. she was originally in. But Amy Sedaris. Yes. Sedaris. She's great. Gosh, she is funny. <laughs> when um, she barges in in the lingerie, ooh, what's that? Ooh, what's that? <laughs> Intercom. Uh, when, did you hear what she's talking about when she goes up or when she's like, she's on the phone? Uh-uh. Is it like stray walks, cats? She's like, she's like well, I don't know. I've never done anything like that before. Well, how many? I've never declawed cats before. Well, how many are there? Eight? Well, bring them by the camper and, you know, well, <laughs> it's like, so she's like not making any money. She, she lives, lives like on the outskirts. Two hours of, away in a camper. Yeah. Like she's just underpaid. It's got to be improv, that and, whole thing. And willing to like declaw cats for extra money that she's <laughs> never done this before. So, and then, but again, I love it when he gets in there and he kind of does the whole, he's like, uh... You're my dad, <laughs> and I'm your son. Uh, and I was adopted. And I was adopted. But you didn't know I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all improv. And they just, had to be. Yes. And I love when when James Conn's just like, okay, <laughs> get on well, with it. <laughs> that was weird. That was weird. <laughs> and <laughs> it's just like I've said that a bunch of times. Usually not, they just put my name in Rudolph or something. Yeah, he's like, wow, that was that was weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've said it a bunch of times, not realizing where I was taking it yep, from. And I was yep. like, that's where I get this from. Um, and again, it's James Conn's performance, and I think that they just wanted him to do this, do it this way. It's just be blank. Yeah, I don't know, man. It. It kind of rose me the wrong way here and there. Like there's certain scenes where like he's, and I I read that at the premiere, uh, James Con went up to Will Ferrell and was like, "Hey, I, uh, I I thought that like you were horrible in this movie, and I didn't think that like this was gonna be anything." Like and then when he watched, the the, top. yeah, and then when he watched the movie, he's like, "I get it now. I get why the juxtaposition of me being super blunt." Yeah. But it see, I can feel James Con. The prestigious actor from The Godfather. Right. Being like, who is this fucking clown? Like, I can feel that from his performance. Yeah. And it taints it a little bit for me. I know it it could also work for it for somebody else, but it does not work for me all of the time. Sometimes, like I, yes, right? I can, yes, yeah. I, like, you know, uh, towards the end and mm-hmm. everything, I'm like, yes, he, he is. I do like him in this role, definitely. I'm just I I can just kind of feel the disdain he kind of has towards Will Ferrell a little bit. Yeah, I can't help it, but I don't know. It 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 makes me dislike it, but also I can't say that it's a negative because that's exactly what they're that's going. Exactly for. what they wanted. Yeah, um, I I I go back and forth on his performance and stuff, but then I think like, man, it's James Caan. Yeah, I mean, if he does. Jimmy He's, the Dream. Jimmy the Dream. <laughs> Jimmy the Dream. Rollerball, right? Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. Whatever you want, as long as it's not the remake, whatever That's you want. That's just fine. Um, no, but 
there's something about him that I really, really, really do enjoy, and yeah. I really do like his performance, and I love how dry he is, and he is just completely dejected almost from life of just this person who is – it's just work. His son knows it. Uh, his wife basically knows it. He comes out – like, all he does is just work. And I like that that's what he does. And I also like the books and stuff. I think yeah. – is this is this the part where he's, like, talking to the guy about the, the book that the missing went out? pages. Yeah. yeah. Uh, will you hit the uh, – I got a prop. Ooh, here's a prop. I want the book about the dog and the pigeon. With the missing pages? With the missing pages. Okay. With his signature <laughs> – on the page. Oh, on the pages. I yes. like that. Yeah, I want that book. We're not going to take a thirty thousand dollar bath so the kid can find out what's happened to a friggin' puppy. <laughs> Ship him. <laughs> Ship him. <laughs> um, I'm taking uh, Peter Dinklage's idea book. Oh, nice. Good call. That's got us. <laughs> like him pointing to his this. <laughs> and honestly, his honestly, particularly <laughs> yeah. psyched about. Yeah. If anybody wanted that, I could go with anything Kyle Gas touches in this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah I think whatever. he's the best fucking part about this movie. I love him so much, and we will get. To, we'll get there. We will get. It's the best part. <laughs> I want uh, obviously, you know, I want the the mini pig chair that Will Ferrell sits on <laughs> in the corner of the room. It's okay. like a pink pig yeah. that he sits. I don't even know why it's there, yeah. and like why would that have even been in his office? I don't know, but I want it, and I want it to just be like for my daughter Willa to sit on in the corner. Or <laughs> yeah, like that. yes. that's what I want, man. All right. Um, on on that note, the other thing I was battling about was, I, I want to say this: his emergency bottle of syrup. <laughs> yes. That he's got in his sleeve, but mm. then again, if he did travel for o- almost a year to get there, how long <laughs> is that stashed away? <laughs> and how, why didn't he hey, use it? Is, <laughs> is aged maple syrup yeah. good than better? I think than it is. It's like whiskey. Syrup. The older it I gets. would imagine. Okay. Yeah. No. Oh, one sense. last thing on James Con. He just like his his lines seem super buried in the soundtrack. Oh, uh, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, he uh, seems very uh, mumbly, and uh, like that's why I think he's maybe a little dejected from the performance. Okay. But Maybe it works. Maybe it, it. It just. I'm conflicted on it. Sorry. Well, we can move on. No. Last little tidbit about that scene. The one of the security guards that throws Will Ferrell out from the Empire State Building is Patrick Ferrell, yeah. Will's brother. Never oh. seen him in anything before. Neither but have I. Doesn't look like him. Nothing. They, they seem pretty yeah, good actors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Oh, sure. we'll tell them. Yeah. They both seem pretty good. <laughs> Go back to Gimbal. <laughs> yeah. So scene three, Buddy takes a security guard's sarcastic suggestion, get back to Gimbel's where he's mistaken for an employee and meets Jovi. The next morning, Buddy is shocked to discover that Gimbel's Santa is not real and a fight ensues between them. Buddy is arrested and Walter reluctantly bails him out and takes him to a pediatrician for a DNA test. Once it's proven that Buddy's in fact Walter's son, he takes Buddy home to meet his wife, Emily, and son, Michael. Mm-hmm. Zoe. The queen. The queen of all queens. She's she's great in this movie. I love Zoe Deschanel yeah. <laughs> so much. I love how awkward she is in this movie. Yeah. She's the perfect you don't want like that's what's all wrong about Hallmark movies to me is the like, oh, just the oh, this beautiful woman yeah. that is perfect and has makes a million dollars a year doesn't have a boyfriend. You yeah. know, like <laughs> Zoe yeah. Zoe's just kinda like looks like her bat her last relationship went wrong. Yep. She's not making any money. She's very like mm, uh, eating uh, noodles like, every night. Yeah, stay, stay away. Why are you look? Why are you looking at me? You know. Like, yeah. I, I love even when she walks away from him and just kind of goes. Yeah. Apparently, when she auditioned for this, she she was blonde for a different role before this. Okay. And she came into audition and they and they liked her, but they liked her with her blonde hair, and so they had her keep the blonde hair for this movie specifically. They they were like. Uh, you have blonde hair. We want your blonde yeah. hair. Don't change your blonde hair. And it's like she's so much better looking with dark. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you say. I th- I think so. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I <clears throat> doesn't matter either way. Uh, I, she's she is like in this like she's gorgeous, but then at the same time, her the whole vibe of yes. her of just being, look, they're about to shut my water off. Like yeah. they're gonna shut the like everything about it is is great, and I love that it's not. That it's not somebody in the corporate ladder, yeah, yeah. who's I, gonna fall in love with the whimsical Will Ferrell, she, and she's actually and be reunited with her ch- inner child. Yeah, it's, like, yeah. <laughs> it's actually great for her. She gets to move, you know. She gets to move to the North Pole, yeah. and she's like, "I got nothing else going on, so let's just <laughs> yeah. let's go to the North Pole together and have babies." I, I guess. do I wish know. water was still shut off. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't go back. I li- <laughs> They're looking for me. Um, I I do wish that they had found 
of like out of like how good of a com- comedic performance she could be, especially like a new girl. I wish they had found that out in this movie before. Yeah, you know, I know, like, but it we'll, does. It doesn't go up next to Will Ferrell. It will Ferrell. not. It will yeah, never right? go up to you know. You got your star, and that's that's the engine that's driving this movie. But I do think that if they knew what they had, they could do something great with it. But mm-hmm. also having Zoe in your movie, you have to have her sing. I don't think she's in and the they movie. Didn't know, they didn't. They didn't apparently realize. know. They that didn't she could know. Sing. Yeah. Yeah. And she she kind of started, and then like she got on the soundtrack at the end with uh, yeah, Leon. Yeah, with Leon Redbone. Um, John I think, Favreau heard her and uh, yes, sang, sang was something. Like, was uh, like, oh, we we should probably incorporate something. And then this. every movie since that she was in, then she was cast as kind of more of a side character. She has a sing singing part. I hate, you have to. I hate baby. It's cold outside. Like it's the most overplay. And and I'm not even being like a modern day person. Be like, ooh, that's rapey. Like you I'm not like just take that out of the equation because it's just a dumb song. Yeah. And it's so overdone. And there are so many. I was telling my wife today. Oh, like. Wait, you're a woman and you can sing? I'm a male. I can <laughs> sing. We should do it that. It's like <laughs> everyone <laughs> fucking does it, but I am pretty convinced this version of her in the shower with Will Ferrell sitting there is my favorite version of the song. I like it. Their voices fit so well together. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Cuz it's not the it's not the classic like <laughs> but baby it's all <laughs> on fire. Oh, I am the, I'm the bassy <laughs> I am a baritone man. voice. <laughs> you can tell I'm the man because I talk like this. Yes. I take control every time you hear me. <laughs> but what about my pride? <laughs> <laughs> I can't go to my buddies and tell we didn't bang. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What's the point of her? Was it this? Was What about my pride? What about my pride? I thought we were drinking tonight. I told myself I would not get into the lyrics of this song. God damn. Okay, we're switching. <laughs> you, you want I a belt. Want you, you, yeah, you're talking about not being able to put up co- like someone's comedy next to Will Ferrell. I think there is one person, though, that worked. Phase on love. Oh, okay. Phase on love. <laughs> okay. Dude, Phase on love in this movie, he's the the yeah. Gimbal's store manager yeah. or whatever. His interactions with Will Ferrell are fucking perfect. They're great. Yeah. It's like sing, singing is your favorite. Why don't you make work your favorite? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> like he's just no, he's it's not. so. <laughs> yes, it is. No, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> there's no perfect. singing. There's no singing in the North Pole. Yes, there is. No, we sing all the time. <laughs> He's no, it's not. No, it's not. Yes, where's it the, is. Where's the snow? <laughs> he, I love him, and and you even mentioned it in the early on that this was role was supposed to go to Wanda Sykes. Yeah, she would have been great. They were so sure that Wanda was going to That's make right. this That's right. that they made a name tag that said Wanda. Yeah. <laughs> And when Faison showed up, he's like, no, I w- don't change that. <laughs> no, I'm Wanda. So he's wearing a Wanda <laughs> name tag the Wanda. whole movie. It's oh. fucking awesome. I love when he's announcing to the customers that Santa <laughs> is coming. And he's just like, Santa Claus is coming tomorrow. And he's Santa. like, Santa! And he's like looking at Will Ferrell like, keep your keep your coupons <laughs> and uh, you'll yeah, get in for your, free with Santa. Your <laughs> Because he's going, oh, and, oh. and, then, and then the elf walks up and he goes, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's nonstop brush because then the <laughs> then the, the announcer goes, we're closing in 10 minutes. And so, uh, uh, Will Ferrell reacts to the overhead speakers. Dude, it's just like, it never lets up, really. this The one thing I did notice about this movie is it's just like, it's yeah. quick. It's from scene to scene to scene. Get it done. Get it done. Move on. It's It's very much, it's very much pay attention or you're going to miss something that, that Will Ferrell reacts to, puts into this performance. The people watching him, who are who are just, they are. I kind of imagine that this is what New York is like. Unfortunately, and <laughs> not not to like say anything bad about our New York listeners or anything like that, but it's like the most what I think of of like big city big city holiday traditions and fun and the whole city is lit up but everyone's walking around like goddamn holiday season <laughs> always stupid snow on I, the ground with I the guess ice I'm a New and the, like and you know <laughs> you're just doing just constantly that and that's what everybody he's running into yeah. is like and you're you're it's so caught up in that and everybody's you'll miss their reactions to buddy who is the complete opposite yeah. if you don't pay attention. And that's what I love about it. So, I don't know. 
Yeah, and then you got Artie Lang as Santa Claus. So good. <sighs> yeah. It's, it's just such a... You, you stink. You smell like beef and cheese. Like beef and cheese. I, I believe <laughs> Artie Lang <laughs> does smell like beef I and cheese. I imagine he does. Say, he probably did smell like beef and cheese at that point. Let the kid talk. <laughs> I think you're going to have a good Christmas there, kid. <laughs> I love his voice. His voice is so good. And like... Uh, the whole fight scene is, is super funny. They had to get all of that in one shot, and this is like one of the one of the CGI yeah. or green screen scenes that they had to do because they didn't want to get all the kids in the background in the yeah. shot in, in fear of like a Lego would hit or their. Or one of them face. does something stupid yeah. and you can't retake it. So they they green screened the kids in the in the background and had uh, the fight. And with the probably Legos. a blue screen though, right? Because oh, Will yeah. had green on it. Probably that's huh? probably yeah, yeah. True, yeah. True, true, true. Yeah. Um, so they had that and. Getting that in one shot, I just can't can't imagine. Like you have to do it the, right. The pressure you of it. You have to do this right. We are not rebuilding this entire cityscape. I can't right. imagine that. That may have taken the most time in this Probably. entire movie. Probably was building all those. What are the light brights yes. and the etch a sketches oh and all that shit. <laughs> He I also like phase ons before. He's like, they're watching us. <laughs> yeah, they're watching us. So watch like, your backs. I got your backs. So you guys are with me. <laughs> Remember, if I go he, down, <laughs> you're going with me. I love that he is such a he is almost <laughs> such a retail manager, like he new is. in the position. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He is so perfect for that. In the idea of like. When things don't start like start to look bad, he's gonna pull in the camaraderie. But if but beforehand, <laughs> yes, yes. he's like, I don't care about anybody else. Get to except work, me. Get why to you, work. Do why are you job. not picking that up? Yeah, it's David Keckner and waiting. Like, <laughs> yes. push the fish. It's about to turn. Yeah, like, come on, guys. Why you're don't leaning, we ever hang out? If you're leaning, you have time to clean. Yeah, yeah. whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> right. Or I just love it. He's like, you guys see the place? Yes. Looks pretty good. A little too good. A little too good. Right, bothering the professional. He's like, <laughs> it's like if you got yes. switch over to channel three. It's like code name. Sam's got a brand new bag. <laughs> <laughs> and I like how Joey just goes, okay, yeah, anyway. Sure. <laughs> Six inch ribbons. <laughs> it's impossible. Six inches. inches. My wife might say that more that quote more than anything. <laughs> Is I've that right? Heard. Anytime it's six in, there's something that's six inches. Six inches. I'm gonna go out on a I I didn't I just kind of realized this right now, but is is phase on love, is he maybe is he just everything that Keenan Thompson wants to be? Uh, yeah, I'm just saying. Maybe like I love him because I I could I could see him saying that same line in the exact same way. You're very, you, dude, you, you're you know right. what I mean. And because his delivery similar is humor. very similar, yeah. very similar humor. And uh, but I'm like, man, Faze on Love is just so great in he this role. For this. Yeah, he's I great. love him. Yeah, uh, all I, the presents were wrapped in the back too. Yes, did you? He took every toy and wrapped yes. every toy before it was purchased. He got his forty minutes of sleep. He's good to go. <laughs> forty minutes. <laughs> I got a full forty minutes. Full forty minutes. So the DNA test. Uh, John Favreau's the yep. doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, I I love I love his performance as he's sitting there. Why does this have paper on it? Uh, why are you doing my fingers? Ah! Ah! Pricks his finger. I love this scene so he, much. He is acting like a child. Yeah. Of just the what's that? Why can't I have that? Can oh, what's that? Why do you have a sesame? Can I that? Mm, what's that? That tastes really good. Like eating the cotton balls. Buddy, buddy Unbe- stop eating those. Unbelievable <laughs> performance. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's so good. To that me, was man. just like uncolored uh, cotton candy in, in that jar. Okay, yeah, good. <laughs> Can you imagine eating cotton balls? I think about that and like it's the texture. Gross. It's like that that that. It's almost the same feeling to me internally as like running your nails down a chalkboard. Ugh. Yes, I'm just like. Ugh. Ugh. So he takes him, he takes him home. He is in so- his son, in fact, and we get the best. We're gonna mom. get to that right now. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Ready. Are we moving on? Do Scene it. four. Buddy befriends Michael, and Michael encourages Buddy to ask Jovi out. The next day, Walter reluctantly takes Buddy to work with him. That night, Buddy has a successful date with Jovi. Walter, meanwhile, has been trying to save his floundering business by hiring best-selling writer Miles Finch. When Finch arrives, Buddy mistakes him for an elf. The offended Finch attacks Buddy and storms out, ruining the book deal. Walter loses his temper at Buddy and tells him to leave, even though it's Christmas Eve. Mary's Dean version is the yes. best cinema mom on the entire planet and has been Will Ferrell's mom at least twice. What about Cinema Wife? Cinema I love wife. It. Put that in there too. Yeah. Like uh, just Parenthood, right? Yeah. That we did. She's she is a fucking fox yes. too. I don't like nothing against her or anything, but she has looked the same age. Mm-hmm. No. I don't think that's nothing. I don't think that's anything against she her. She has looked the I same age in every movie that I've ever seen her in and she is so hot. Yeah. 
I love her, and she's so charming. She's always compassionate in yes. her roles too. You and know, and very fucking funny. Yeah, almost like uh, I don't. I'm sorry. What's her name? And um, uh, just friends. Joyce, <laughs> that <laughs> mom. Yeah, oh, I want to yeah. see a movie with them together. Like, like they're like friends. Like airplane her and Mary Steenburgen in whatever. Just do odd couple style. Yes, I, but they're I want both them... still the sweet people that they are. Yes, I want them <laughs> together in like a, a crime caper or something. I don't oh know. Oh my gosh, it'd be yes. so much fun. I love her so much. But. And the way, yeah, she's like, oh, usually I'm the one making breakfast. Oh, it's spaghetti, spaghetti. and she like, puts the syrup. That's en- that's enough. Mmm, and she kind of goes. Mm. You ever had uh, brown sh- <laughs> brown sugar in your like your spaghetti though? No. She's like, is that's, that actually pretty good? That's great. <laughs> it's, I just love, I'm sorry. <laughs> her reactions, I'm just picturing her reaction. And it's just like, oh, it's really good. Oh. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> Buddy made us breakfast and lunch. Buddy made us And lunch. <laughs> and, and she's so appreciative. And you're just like, you are the best. Dude, you're a, too nice. A yeah. bag of spaghetti. And the spaghetti is my favorite food. You're a so bag of spaghetti is so exciting and to me. And it says on <laughs> the bag, written in just like beautiful calligraphy, her name, <laughs> Emily. <laughs> God, because he got his full forty minutes. Full that forty minutes. When he, man, when he puts that, when he's home by himself and he's calling Walter and he's putting the mm. chocolate pop tarts in there and doing that, that it, I mean, and then I read that apparently the first time he did it, he threw, he it, threw up. it up, like mid scene. Oh, he's like, because <laughs> yeah. I can't even imagine what that takes. Because he goes, he puts it in his mouth and then keeps it there when he reaches for the pop tarts and then puts more on there and starts going like and he this. doesn't even lose it though like he, like you can see in his face he doesn't even lose it at all i mean mm-hmm. i guess it is the second take and he's yeah. kind of used to it now but that like he's like mm. like it's like it's his favorite fucking dish <laughs> you like, know it's it's again it's that little <laughs> kid performance of like mm. <laughs> 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 the way I used to eat like a uh, gusher sour yeah. gushers like because mm-hmm. like little kids can never sit still while they're eating they're just like <laughs> <laughs> this is why you gotta watch us on YouTube my friends <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 just, like have the clicker in their <laughs> one hand. <laughs> 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 you're dude you're out he nailed so, he so nailed do, it do elves have a different digestive system than humans i have to imagine yeah, because if this. you ate this much you would be like he was in real life and actually puke but then what's but again this goes back to sean's Ugh. point he's not an elf yeah exactly so like are we just just completely because we're not willing to tell buddy what he really is we're just fucking his life up yeah he's gonna die from cancer any day now because he doesn't have the Look, proper Look, digestive I system. You then. can you can act like an elf all you want, yes. but you have to realize your biology is human. Yeah, you so, haven't had meat for thirty years. Yeah, oh you you need you're supposed to have that. You yeah. need as a human that we're genetically bred for that. Eat, Some vegetables or eat a fresh stem fruit. of broccoli. <laughs> you know. Um, oh, you don't drink water. What would that do to him? You know what what would what would it do to him to eat like a, a like a bite of a salad? You know what I mean? It wouldn't, it wouldn't take. Just clears him out. It's just roughage. Oh. It's just fiber. Get a glass of athletic greens. Yeah. Come on on board, you guys. I mean, that would probably clear him right out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it would just make him shit. Yeah. Uh, no. I laugh so hard because this is definitely what me and my brother used to do to my dad when we were younger. Like, you know, we had this little, you know, 900 square foot ranch back in St. Louis where it was just three bedrooms all next to each other. And we'd be in bed and I'd just be like, dad, (laughs) (laughs) dad, (laughs) like my dad laughed so hard at this part because that is to a T what we used to, we'd be in bed and we'd we'd just be going, dad, (laughs) dad. and he'd come and be like, what? I'd be like, my window needs to be cracked one more inch, please. Uh, <laughs> and he would crack it and be like, good night. Okay, as good he's night. leaving, can you leave the door open? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I, lo- I love that. I lo- uh, and wa- that's one of those moments where you can tell that James Caan is not into this scene. Yes. But it, but it, but it works because he d- that's what his really characters, does. when the tickle fight, tickle fight, and he's just like, he gets real tense, like he's about ready to jack Will yeah. Ferrell in the face <laughs> yeah. for tick. Because I, I think that was improv on Will Ferrell's part. The tickle part? I'm pretty sure that Will Ferrell just did that to I, James Caan. If, it, if it's not out there that it's fact or not, it is now because uh, I love that. Yeah. Uh, that's scary. Can you imagine doing that unscripted to James Caan? To James Jimmy Con. the Dream? Yeah. Sonny? <laughs> Whatever his name, yes. I don't know. Like, like, um, I so since we're talking about the tickle scene, 
I want to just go ahead. I want to do a little bit of a rewind here, guys, just real quick, and take this from James Khan's perspective. Yes. No, you're correct. I'm, I'm, I'm I glad. am going to – we're going to start with somebody shows up and has an old picture of you, and he's 30 years old, and he's dressed like an elf, and he's talking to you about how all these things are coming together and that he's your son. And, of course, you know, at least at this point, he has gotten the confirmation that he is, in fact, his son. But at the same time, this man is dressed like an elf, believes he is one, and is spouting off about Santa being real, the elves, all this stuff, and then he pulls you in for a tickle fight. Yep. I'd probably punch him too. It's a You'd be a little creeped out at this point, guys. You can, a little bit. You can see this scenario and be like, yeah, James Conn's kind of being an asshole to his son. It's like... Well, <laughs> it is kind of out of nowhere. Let's be honest here. Okay? It's a little out of the ordinary the way Buddy is acting. I can't believe you would treat him like that. I mean, geez, it's so terrible. You treat him like that. And it's just like, really? Like, 30 year old guy who really? just is acting this way? Are you you sure? I mean, we humanize the goons on this show. I think yeah. right now we're humanizing the Scrooges or the humanizing the curmudgeons. Yep. I think. I'm I'm with you, man. Yeah. I would be even if it was my son. I'd be like, it's gonna take me a little bit of time because hey. I've never seen this in a human before. We need you to lose the tights. Yes, immediately. I, I, yep, right now. <laughs> Unfortunately, right now? it was right now. <laughs> 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 it turns turns out she'd had the old bull, and now she's looking at the old cat. Hey, all right. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> wow. Dude, she's Fox, man. Uh, she is, I know, man. I know. If we were on a train to yes. go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Uh, it's got to be Fulton. It's got to be the, the owner of the company played by Michael Lerner, who I believe is Blank now a check. two-time, I think he's a two-time punchable face. Yeah. Punchable I'm pretty face sure we called we him? him. I don't know if we had punchable face and blank check, That's but I'm true. pretty sure he would have been. I Biederman? Right. Yeah. Biederman. Yeah, Biederman. Biederman. I'm pretty sure he would have been our punchable face in Blank Check, and he definitely is in this movie. I'm with you. Yep. But that's why he he's a great actor, because he can turn that, like, you hate this guy. There really is nobody else except the... Um the horse Nazis, the Santa, the Central Park no, Nazis, Central that, Park Ranger we'll Nazis. Get, we'll get to Ranger, them. <laughs> Ranger Nazi. Yeah, yep. um, yeah. Uh, four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Yeah, who essentially are like the Nazgul from like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is we're doing? Let's a lot let's of go, let's wait. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's, that's that. fine. Uh, the only the only other punchable face I I did have uh, in reference to this. Yes, I do think it is it is Biederman. Juice, not Thursday. Uh, <laughs> not Thursday. Uh, <laughs> is Listen is the news anchor the news anchor later on who cuts off the news yeah. reporter? Ah, uh, okay. And she's like, "Well, here I uh, know we're cutting off your big first news story, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but here at Channel Nine and News, we like to cover real news. I'm literally pointing out how big of a dick I am and how bad you I think you are at your job. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> that's you're a pretty good asshole. call." So, AJ call. always has the deep cuts. Uh, try. Yeah. Uh, he was definitely the one for me. But let's I will, uh, let's uh, yeah. let's punch Biederman, and Kay. as we punch, as we come back with our fists, let's elbow the news on accident. I like that. Like, yeah. Oh, I didn't know you were oh, there. Didn't Whoops. You, oh, didn't see you were standing there. I like that. Yeah, I'm down with that. You got to talk about the mail room where he where he gets him in the office. But he is he said, well, first of all, when he when he walks in the office, he's like, hello, friend. and he's got his uh, his suit on and yes. he's acting <laughs> tough. I but love then he walks past the secretary and he yes. goes, hi. hi. <laughs> oh my god. I, how are you doing? Are She's you? so sweet too. She's like, "Hi, how are you?" I didn't even recognize you. you changed, What's you her name? What's her name again in the movie? Oh, geez. Deb. Yeah, Deb. Deb. Deb, Deb yeah. Have I told you you have the most pretty face? Yo. That's the nicest thing. You should be on a seen. Christmas card. I Whoa. love that. <laughs> so sweet. Just but, made my day. But he sends him down to the uh, Francisco mail room. Francisco. Fun That's fun to say. Sorry. And I love when he's talking to that dude. The dude slips him. He gives him the syrup, and he's like, "Is there?" Or whatever he's is there sugar and alcohol? Well then yes, I yeah. want that. Whatever. <laughs> and the way he holds his coffee mug is how I hold my Cedar Ridge glass. Yeah. And I'm like I'm like, ah <laughs> yes, finally alcohol after yeah. a long day. But when he's laying with that dude and he's like, dude, I'm I'm twenty six years old, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no <I'm> like, way. <laughs> he's like clearly in his late forties. I love that. I love that whole <laughs> dancing scene. Uh, it's just so funny to me. I I just love this because I feel like this is maybe that's the way every 26 year old who works in a mail room or something does think, though. It's like, 
I got a lot of great ideas, you know. I got a lot of great ideas, and no one ever listens to me, you know. It's like I think you have great ideas, you know. You yeah, you you got great ideas, and it's like well that, but you're in a mailroom, so <laughs> like, I gotta well, get out of the flow. No wait, no, I gotta get into the. I, get into, I think our, the flow. I think our envelopes could be bone colored instead of just what just yeah. plain just plain uh, eggshell white. Uh, that's, yeah. that's that was one of my ideas I brought up to the big man, but the big man didn't want it. Big man never listens to me. I'm 26 me. years old, obviously. You can see that. I love it. You've got great ideas, man. You know, I, I'm going to say it again. You're my best friend. <laughs> You're my best friend. <laughs> you know, this is, I fucking love you, know, you dude. I think we're going we're gonna to go into business together. Yeah, you know? let's do it. I wish yeah. he would have made yeah. another appearance in the movie at some point. Oh, like, yeah. like in the buddy? final scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the house with him at Christmas. <laughs> He's hanging out. Best friend. This is my best friend. Oh, I wish. Yes. Yeah, it would have been it. really cool. Yeah. Great. Um, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say uh, Finch. Yeah, Peter Dinklage. Uh, the whole phone call is super funny. I need I need the car exactly seventy one degrees. S five hundred, picking <laughs> so, me up. So good. Interior of that car to be. I'm gone. Seventy one degrees. Seventy one degrees. <laughs> degrees. I'll be there tomorrow. I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> seventy one. <degrees. laughs> is this the first thing you ever remember Peter Dinklage in? Yes. I I I know he's kind of had a, some things before this, but I don't remember him other yeah. than this. And sometimes it's shocking to go back to this because I think of. Peter Dinklage in um, Game of Thrones. That's really right. how I now associate him with life. And to go back to this, is kind of, you're kind of like, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Peter Dinklage. He's oh, an shit. amazing actor. Yeah, he's so great. God, he is, and he is so funny, dude. And his, like, the way that he does this is phenomenal. And he walks right in. They're just like, Miles, great to meet you. He's like, can we take care of the uh, money situation first? <laughs> yeah. he's, and he's just like, all right. Let's get started. What do you got? And he's just like all business. I love it. When he he goes he takes it further, he's like, "Can we uh, do money situation?" And then he hands him the money. Most people would then just go cool, but he still opens it up and kind of goes, exactly. "Okay, yeah, it's all yeah. done." <laughs> well, in the lead up to this scene, as he's like walking in the building, I'm like, "Oh no, oh no, John Favreau, oh no, you're doing this." Uh-huh. Where he's like, like the perspective of everyone yes. looking, and you don't see him yet, and he's like, yeah. he's walking, and you see them looking down. I'm like, "Oh no." And then he's like, he shoots it so, so the desk is in, encompassing Peter yes. Dinklage. I'm like, this is way before we could. Yeah. We wouldn't be able to get away with these things. <sighs> Probably not. Okay. And the prestigious actor like P- Peter Dinklage, you're doing this too. I'm sure he's used to it by this point. Yeah. It's just like a little bit like you had to go there, I guess. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know. I still, I, I, I'm glad they kind of, they kind of move past it. But, and like, uh, Again, it's the moment of him talking about his ideas. He's like, <laughs> "All we've got is vegetables. I'm out of time, so please." If we <laughs> vegetables, <just. laughs> vegetables are too vulnerable. You can't do vegetables. That's just too vulnerable. And don't do any farms. Everyone's pushing pushing small small town rural right now. <laughs> 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 the ins and outs of children's books. <laughs> children's book writing. He's like, "I've got four or five ideas that I'm specifically excited about." <laughs> it's just like the way he hits that. Kyle book. Gass. Just, we love to him too, Kyle. And Andy Richter oh, together yeah, yes. as a du- as a writing duo. <laughs> Picture this: <laughs> <laughs> a tribe of asparagus children, but they're subconscious about the way their pee smells. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> it's the best. Ooh. That is the best acting in this movie. Oh god! Like it is my favorite reaction of all. I don't know why I love that so much, but Kyle Gass is so yeah. good in that moment. It's because Kyle Gass can be Kyle Gass, but he is a children's book writer. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. It's and uh, even later on when they when they realize they still have Miles Finch's book. Yeah, and he's like he's like, well, go let's get some stuff together. Let's go get a storyboard together. He's like, all right, and he sits and down, they sit down. And James Cowan's <laughs> like, what are you doing sitting down? You can't start a storyboard. He's oh, right, like, oh right, right yeah. It's like, <laughs> what what's the legal ramifications of this? That's what I'm saying. Ooh, I know because there is no contract. I mean, but technically they paid him. Yeah. True. So is this their true. restitution of Very true. saying we paid you and you didn't deliver? I guess there, there 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 still could be a. Because I guess those are unpublished, those are uncopyrighted. They're True. just, they're just kind of sketchy. And as far as we know, he left the book on purpose. But and ultimately, this at this point, they never actually ended up using any of those. So mm, like they yeah. were going to, but we never had to get there. Right. Um. Before we move on to the date scene between him and Jovi mm. is super charming. Yeah. I love how he brings her to the world's best coffee shop. It's like, it tastes <laughs> like a crappy piece, of, crappy cup of coffee. No. <laughs> and, no, it's the best cup of coffee. Uh, it takes him to the the Chrysler tree. Um, Rockefeller, yes, Mary right. Chrysler. Yeah, there. <coughs> um, okay. I just I like the date, and they go skating. Um, and like she's like, "Oh, you missed," and 
because they're on pretty the lips. Cute. It's 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 nice. We have to go. We have to go to New York and film an episode someday, and we have to go skating at at that rink. Hundred percent. Like the, the, this movie makes me want to do that so bad. Yeah. I'll sacrifice an ACL for this. I will. Yes. You're you've gone through five. Yeah, we've already. You're fine. Yeah, it'll be fine, guys. We'll just put a new. At one At this in. point, you have robot legs. Yep. That's <laughs> basically how it is. Well, I love I love his their date. He's basically just taking him, taking her to all the places that he visited when he first got to town, and yeah. it, what what he thought was fun. And again, it's just this eye of the beholder, yeah, very very sweet thing that he did. Yeah. Did. Well, let's go to the final scene. So Buddy watches Santa's sleigh crash and finds him in Central Park. Buddy helps Santa try to make repairs. Meanwhile, Michael bursts in on Walter's board meeting to tell him frantically that Buddy is gone. Walter realizes his mistake and leaves the meeting. While Buddy and Santa escape the Central Park Rangers, Michael, Emily, Jovi, and Walter help spread Christmas cheer to make the reindeer fly. In the epilogue, Papa Elf explains that Walter started his own publishing company, and the first book released was Buddy's own account of his adventures. Papa Elf also reveals that Buddy and Jovi married and had a daughter named Susie, and that they visit the North Pole periodically. Is this your nod again? We we haven't talked about many of them, but the It's a Wonderful Life nod, kind of the... Going to the bridge and mm. contemplating ending it all, perhaps, yep. kind of a moment. It's a little, you you don't think this movie's just so lighthearted and like if you really break it down, you're like, oh wow, is that is that where they're going with this? Shit. Wow. Okay, cool. Like, yeah. What what is he gonna do? He doesn't belong at the North Pole, he doesn't belong here, he doesn't know anything else. Yeah, the ramica- the ramifications of that are, you know, watching it as a kid, you don't really ever think of that, obviously. But then like I mean, Watching It's a Wonderful Life more as an adult than I was a kid, for sure, because it's a black and white movie and it fucking s- it's slow and it sucks. Yeah, um, yeah, he was he was contemplating just be like, well, there ain't nothing left, so I yep. don't I don't belong here, I don't belong there. Yeah. It's just what it is. Yeah, it's pretty. It's kind of a tough scene. He sees, but he, that's where he sees the sleigh. Yeah. So, I mean, he at least feels a calling. That's yeah. good. <laughs> he's got to help. He's got to help the old Santa. Santa needs help now. Yes. The the guy on the did you recognize the guy on the news the gal on the street yes <laughs> plays himself Matt Matt Walsh <laughs> yes he plays himself which is weird because I went to look it up to be like who was that oh that's Matt Walsh so is he just supposed to be just Matt Walsh being the actor just <laughs> hanging on the street that's or what, what are they doing there is that, uh, what's the news Charlotte. anchor's name yeah, Charlotte. Charlotte. Charlotte you're great Charlotte, you're, you're great you're like, your, your eyes <laughs> tell a story your eyes <laughs> tell a story but uh, <laughs> but anyways I mean it's just you know uh, yeah I saw something fall down. And, you're, uh, you're great. And you're actually, great. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> just fell right down into Central Park. But you're you're great, Charlotte. You're great. And it's just like <laughs> your eyes like, really. So do you, do any any other, anything additional? It's like oh, you just you just got a great mouth. And it's just <laughs> <laughs> he's he's never really played like a main role in anything no. as far. As, but you think about like I went back real quick and I pulled two. Like he was one of the Larpers in Role Models. Yeah, F- amazing. Oh, and that, yeah. One of his best little moments was uh, in The Hangover. He was the doctor in The Hangover That's when right. they were trying to get information. Yes. He's, like, he's like, put it in my pocket. I don't want to re-sterilize. You know, uh, like he's just, <laughs> he's so underrated. I gotta believe he, really he plays is. a character on Schitt's Creek, maybe. Um, one of my, f- I'm one not of my sure, f- but yeah. One of my favorite roles that he has done is in Ted. And he's oh. the manager of the, like, uh, uh, Avis or whatever the car rental place is. And he's like, He's like, yeah. He's like, this is what I want you to be doing. All right, I'm going up. All right, I'm moving up the ladder. You got to take else. this. You got to take this. All right, make a cool forty thou a year. All right, <laughs> personal acquaintances with Tom Skerritt. <laughs> 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 <You're just laughs> His delivery is unreal. It's amazing. It really is. <laughs> I like him a lot. I, uh, I just the, the, ending of this movie, like where kind of where we're ending up now, is very. This is where it gets a a lot. I just. <laughs> well, how do you <laughs> like a lot I really fast or like, like? I know where you're going though. It's like it's like when you're talking about a Christmas movie. We like had this. a we had a fun time with these like uh, jokes, but now we're getting to you got to make it Christmas. We're right? getting to the Hallmark wrap up. Yes, yes, the Christmas magic. Yeah, yeah. it's the Christmas and magic, it, it, which it, Die Hard doesn't have. Correct, by the way. <laughs> well where is it and so it inherently works for me because i like that spirit about it a lot uh, i know sean uh, I, i'm feeling you on this man like, and like inherently because obviously that works it, obviously that's what they're going for it works on mostly everybody unless you're just the worst person in the world you know um like people who hate die hard as a christmas movie um, well, well uh, apparently Hans Gruber could have certainly used the clausimeter. <laughs> you could have fucking fly his ass home. This is where be- this is where it becomes 
<laughs> it becomes a Rankin Bass movie. Other, th- it becomes a, a ungrounded Rankin Bass movie. Whereas the past of uh, hour or so has yeah. been pretty grounded. Yes, you know yeah. what I mean. And it's it works because it's like whatever. We got to finish this movie. Yeah, you know, like I, yeah. It's, I'm a bit dejected by this point. I'm a bit I just think like it was yeah, supposed it can end. to be different too at some point. And I think yeah. they kind of wrote it this and just said, "Oh, this is how it's going to end." Yeah, it it's uh, it, it's it 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 does wrap up and it, it's the whole. I I I think one of the part that was most maybe annoying to me is the work on the turbine engine and stuff. Yeah, and it's like, hooray, we got it all working. And it's like the <laughs> it just doesn't work. and then and then all of a sudden it just gets ripped off anyways. You know that whole thing and it's 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 a prolong it's prolonging the inevitable yeah and it's just buying time so that way everyone can get their their belief in santa claus back and buying time and a lot that's like i get frustrated at points with that you know it's like oh shoot it's like if he would have pulled up at the right moment then he wouldn't have hit the the statue and it wouldn't have ripped off the thing again and i don't know it's it's it was it's just like a a distraction of what we really need to happen. I don't know. It's you. It's a it's a a, a hinge, or like a hitch in the, in the movie's giddy up, where the movie has told you pretty much where this movie's going. Yeah, and you kind of know where it's going based on all their holiday movies you've seen. Yeah, and it's just prolonging the inevitable. And at this point, it's just like the comedy's kind of gone. You know, and it's more of a whimsical kind of movie. You're right. Yeah. The comedy pretty much is over at this yeah. point. Yeah. And it, yeah, I just, I don't know. It just doesn't work for me. And it, I can't decipher if it's because of the movie, because other movies do this and I like those, or if it's just me. And so I, I'm not sure how to grade it, but we'll see at the end. I, uh, here's one thing one, two, three, <laughs> four. Here comes the Third Reich to fucking cut That's off Santa's fucking head. That's the thing. Like, we have these dark figures that just need to be brought in to have, to add, to add. A driving force or something to chase. You know what I mean? That's all it is. The Central Park Rangers and I put them on the naughty list. Oh, and they never oh. forgave me. <laughs> I never forgave So then, wait. Me. So hold on. So then, they believe in Santa. So where's the claws meter? Right. That's a good point. True. They're They've chasing been down. believing about Santa for a long time. Yeah. What's see? going on here? I, see, I just don't. I don't know. I think it's a. Uh, it, it was. It's just like the trope. The the four horsemen Ooh. up on the castle and like Ooh. I don't know. They it's do look like the ring wraiths. <laughs> the ring wraiths, yeah. <laughs> that's they, the they look like <laughs> they look exactly like they were based off is what John Favreau was going that, for. Right, yeah. From Lord of the Rings or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's going actually would have just come out. <laughs> yeah. Holy it's, shit. It's very funny. It's 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 funny, but it's also not well, because and, they see Santa and like no one else he's trying to not let anybody else see so him. They see him. Yeah. And so why wouldn't they tell anybody? Like, why they would just not tell people and then make it their life mission mission to hunt down Santa? No, yeah. They, see, they don't actually have voices because they're dead kings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they oh. can't speak. So they're just trying to stab him with a poison All, dagger. The only thing they can say is, "Shire." And we're the Baggins. we're the Central Park Rangers. Right. We believe in nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we're flipping this other. Right. We believe the in nothing. Yeah, we believe nothing. in nothing. We cut off your Johnson. We cut off your Johnson. <laughs> The ring. They're just after. Pants. That's what they're. That's what they're after. <laughs> Off board. Not just any skateboard. Yeah, it's a real huff. A real huff. Etch a sketch. Etch a sketch. Thirteen oh, of them. Thanks. <laughs> Tiffany ring. <laughs> Susie pees her pants a lot. I don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> that little girl is cute. <laughs> she like was. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. I like that a lot. I, I do like to think though that the uh, like the Central Park Rangers, like they get out to it, and it's more like the cops from like Home Alone or something, and they're just like, "Did you guys see that? We're not the only ones, right?" <laughs> and then they go home to their apartment, and they're like, "I don't know. I swear to God, I saw Santa Claus, but everybody else said that they didn't. I don't know what's going this on." This is the third year in a row, John, that you've seen and Santa you've Claus. You've seen Santa in Central Park. It's right like it's a homeless. You, guy. Right after you came from Larry's, the bar you frequent every night, yeah. where everybody was making fun of Max for wanting a spa day. I right. love <laughs> Max. <laughs> He's so good. I love. Uh, no, I don't think that's his real name. Dirk, but Dirk, Dirk Lawson. Dirk. I, I remember to remember Dirk, him because Dirk I love Lawson. him. Dirk Lawson was a spa. Uh, day. <laughs> Must be a different Dirk Lawson. I love that. That is such a good scene. <laughs> uh, and we, you know, we talk about Zoe Deschanel having such a beautiful voice. Uh, very juxtaposed by Mary Steedmergen's. Yep. Uh, yep. 
Wah! I hope she's like pushing that hard to make it not be good, but <laughs> they, she does not have a good singing voice. I do think I read that that they actually reshot this a bit because it was almost too sincere that when she joined in with Zoe De Chanel right. and they're like, eh, I don't know if I like that. That's right. Yeah. The, I think they're like, do it, do it not so good. <laughs> do it not so good. Make it like a little awkward. It'll be endearing that way yeah. rather than like rather than hallmarky of like you joining in and being really good, yeah. you know? So yeah. Well, that's okay. Yeah. She tried. She, she brought tried. the spirit, man. So yeah. the best way to spread that Christmas cheer. I thought the coolest thing that I had never noticed, again, that's what this is all about, is learning, being as critical as you can, trying to watch things you don't normally watch when you watch the movies is, you know, they get to the end and they've had a child mm -hmm. and it's little Susie. And I think that's pretty damn cool that essentially he named it after his mother, Susan Wells. Yeah, there you go. Uh, that's so cool. Indeed. Never thought about it that way. That's a good point. I, yeah. I don't even think I realized that. Name, name the baby after his mother he never knew, Susan Wells. Thanks, nice. thanks Susan. Pretty Susie. nice little way. Susie's a nice great name. Susie. Susie. Yeah. Susie. Come well, here, little one. <laughs> I want to see you. <laughs> that was another forced perspective shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like all that stuff. So when they showed um when they showed the young uh Will Farrell sitting on the lap, uh what's his face? Uh Bob Newhart was like ten feet behind. Yep. Just standing. God, they did. And then so they just good. had some kids' legs sticking out. Yep. Like it, unbelievable. Yep. Yeah. Never mind. Was that all we got, boys? Yeah, That's yeah. All we got. Well, we've dissected this with a modern eye. We stripped away all the Christmas nostalgia. We got to give it a modern day rating. AJ, what are you doing, man? Um, I'll need you to pull a couple numbers for me, Mike. Okay. Just for as far as my uh my other Christmas movies have Will gone. Will you with me as well? Mostly. Okay, we're gonna get there. I'm only gonna yeah. give you two. You have to get. I'm gonna give you Home Alone. I need to, I do and need Santa to know. I'm going to give you Home Alone and Santa Claus real quick. You ready? Okay. AJ, 8.2 on Home Alone. Sean, 9.5 on Home Alone. AJ, 7 on Santa Claus. Sean, 8 on Santa Claus. Uh, what about and then Christmas I'm gonna get Vacay? You, I'll yeah. get you there. So as I, as we pull that up. Here we go. Ready? Uh, yeah. Christmas Vacation, AJ, 7.5. Sean, 4.6. Okay. Uh, Christmas Story, AJ, 8.2. Sean, 8. Uh, I think I you got You could it. find all those if you go to our website, confusedbreakfast.com. I just didn't have enough time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but you can. Um, you can. No, so I I do think that this is has joined the ranks of like Christmas classics. You know, we're, this is getting to be the twenty year mark. Next year will be twenty years Damn. since this movie came out, which is a crazy thing to think about. You know, you still think of Will Ferrell looking like this, and all these actors. And unfortunately, you know, some of these actors are no longer with us, um, which is very sad. I mean, uh, James Can just passed away uh, previously this year, um, so. Uh, that being said, I really do. I think that this has joined the ranks of, of Christmas movies and classics and instant classics and whatever you want to say. I think it's a great one to revisit for the holiday. The way that they put this together, the, and, um, and John Favreau at the helm of it with, a, honestly, an amazing cast. Think of, like, read through this cast and you'd be like, what the hell are we even going to watch if you had this? no idea? And it's just, it's a great cast. So... That all being said, I, I I know I think I know exactly where this stands um, for me, and that is at a seven point nine. Mm. Seven point nine for the age, Sean. What about you, man? You know what? Will you do me a favor? Pull up Just Friends for me. I think this movie, like John Favreau, you I, were you were six point five on Just 6. Friends. Six point five. Um, I think that John Favreau tells a good story here. I I I love the hands down. Uh, old school filmmaking of it all. I appreciate that so much. Yeah. Will Ferrell is the absolute fucking engine of this movie. Yep. He carries it the whole way through. I love all the supporting characters, Zoe Deschanel, James Caan, uh, Mary Steenburgen. I love them all. It is just, I got to say, not... I, this is a perfect movie for a 10-year-old or like a like a 15-year-old me, I got to say. Like in that in that time range. Mm -hmm. Now I am just like I love when he gets hit by the cab and I love I love little little details like Dirk Lawson and <laughs> And yeah. the per performance of Phase on Love, yeah. like that that stuff is funny to me now, but it's not like <laughs> like belly laugh, laugh out loud for me funny. So I don't really engage in this movie the way that I really want to, that I do other holiday movies that we've covered. 
Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go five point eight on this. A little low on the Shauner there, five point eight. I'm gonna call it a seven point six for myself. I think it's it's not the best mm-hmm. Christmas movie that you go to every year, but it's one of the best. Where it's like it's gonna be an every year watch. It, it has been. It will continue to be. It's fun for everybody. It's fun for mom and dad and grandma and grandpa. It's fun for little kid. It's fun for middle kid. It's it's a great movie. It's not perfect. You take Will Ferrell out of it, and it's just like, yeah, that didn't work for me. So he was the engine. I love that you said that. So I'm, yeah, I'm 7.6. Mm. Our executive producer, Josh Miller, says, after rewatching it, even with the critical eye, it's still just a plain fun movie. The movie is the right length. It never feels like it drags. As I was watching, I was surprised to learn or be reminded that this was Farrell's first leading role. Oh, he yeah. had plenty of jobs as a supporting role up to this point. My girlfriend read something that he said during production that this movie was going to make his career or end it. Clearly, this launched him. Watching more critically than I ever have, Farrell's comedic timing added to this physical comedy is spot on without being over the top. He also had a perfect childlike innocence while clearly being a 30-year-old adult. All of us would love to go through one day of our lives doing and saying the same things we did throughout. Uh, I still stand by... Um, sorry, I still stand by my previous statement that this movie was, is, and always will be watchable, will always be fun, will always leave you with a smile on your face. If someone truly doesn't like this movie, they are certainly entitled to their own opinion, but I surely don't want that negativity in my life. Yeah. I certainly don't have anyone in this movie I want to punch in the face, but I do want that New York Skyline Lego set of <laughs> bunny assembled nice. in gimbals. That's very true. Well done. My modern day score is honestly the same. This movie, when it's all said and done, is just as good as the first time I saw it. No better, no worse, and that's a good thing in my book. P.S. I really wish Jingle All the Way would have won. Same. Mm. So again, if he is the same score, he's a seven point seven six five, which takes us to a seven point two seven nostalgically, or sorry, a modern day rating. So seven point two seven guys is going to take us to the number forty four movie on our list. Just below Top Gun, just above Point Break, um, and if and and I'm going to throw this out who the there. Fuck, I'm. This is these are our ratings. <laughs> yeah, but who yeah. who's you're the, asking the wrong guys? Who's or maybe the, the right bastard guys? that gave Point Break a low rating? Uh, maybe you didn't give low enough rating to Elf, but yeah. I will point out See? that the Santa Claus is slightly higher in our ratings at a seven point three three, uh, yeah. Christmas Story seven point nine. And Home Alone, by the way, is uh, 8.9 on our list. 8.9. So, as so as far as be. we're concerned, this this is not the best Christmas movie we've ever seen, but it's it's pretty Look, decent. it's undeniable. Did it's, you have it, Christmas Vacation on there? Who yeah. cares about somewhere? No, we're, You're we, right. We, Thank you. Know, you need to know, because we did not, you know, for our friends out there, we did not necessarily give Christmas Vacation one of the best uh, ratings it. we've ever given, but um, Christmas Vacation 6.36. Fine. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah. It's it, I I don't want anybody to think that I hate this movie either. I think it's a uh, completely watchable, but it yeah, I I I do think that it deserves its place among those movies that that are better than it. Yeah. There <laughs> there, there you go. See, I think that's a good way to put it. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for being here. Tune in next week for a bonus episode top 5 winter movies brought to you from our amazing Patreon members followed by Dumb and Dumber. <sighs> It's and, happening. And then we are moving into the new year of 2023 where we have some amazing things planned. You, go, you don't even know. You don't mm. even you have know. no idea. Have no idea. And if you're new to the podcast and it's still Christmas season for you, go back this time last year, Christmas Story. The week before that, Christmas Vacation. Two years ago, Santa Claus and Home Alone. We got all oh, your man. Christmas movie needs Come for you. We know you're watching all these movies anyway. You might as well hear us do some dissection on it. Yeah. Don't forget that we have a voicemail, 319-804-9596. Leave us a voicemail like today's caller. Hey, Mike. I love your episode uh, from the Goonies house. It was fantastic. We did it too. I live in Astoria, and I work at Fort George Brewery. Hey. Uh, we'd love to have you guys in. Hope you guys come back to Astoria. Love the fact that you guys came here in the first place. Hope to give you guys a tour around and uh, maybe get you some good pizza and some good brews on us, of course. Uh, hit me up. Uh, love you. Again, my name is Nate, and uh, lo- love the podcast. You guys were amazing. Found you from Bert. Thanks, guys.
Thank you, man. Yeah, contrary Thanks, to popular belief, uh, we are on the show too. Uh, we, I think it's because my we're all we are all co-hosts of this show. There's Sean. not just one host. We are all co-hosts. Sean, my voice is on the voicemail, so I think he was referring to me. He's like, "Oh, hey, Mike, how are you?" No, we went to Fort Fort we George, did. and it was a uh, beautiful. The pizza was fucking amazing, and the beer was even better. It was. We spent a great bad. night at Fort Dur- George Brewery, man. So uh, yeah. we will be we back will. to the story. Oh, a hundred percent. We will hit you up when we do. For sure, free that pizza. Was so good, damn right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> damn right. You you are speaking our language. Yeah. Well, AJ, take us out of the show, man. Guys, you have done it again. You made it all the way through an episode, and I hope that you have left us a review while you were listening because we love reading them. Apple Podcasts, you can leave us a five star review. Write us a review at the same time. Uh, same with on Spotify. Just drop us that five stars. It means the world to us. We love to read them. We also love to hear from you on our social media at Confused Breakfast, just about anywhere on social media. It's just at Confused Breakfast. Search for Confused Breakfast wherever you are. Get at that same damn website and uh, get some merch from us. Get some Confused Breakfast shirts. Get some shirts that say Prior and Son's Funeral Home, pre Funeral Home, and or uh, Where Are the Parents shirts. You can get some hats. You can get some hoodies. Do all that stuff. And you can also go to our website, confusedbreakfast.com, and look at our rankings of our movies where mm-hmm. we just went through uh, some of the Christmas ones. Yeah, and check us out, patreon.com slash confusedbreakfast. Join the group of people that help make this show possible. You get tons of bonus audio, private Discord server, voting on movies. Uh, this show is produced by LAS Media Group yeah. here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Craig Mann in the controls today. Thank you, Craig. Thanks for everything they do. Check them out at lasmediagroup.com. I think that's going to be it for us, guys. Merry Christmas, you guys. Merry Christmas. Have a happy holidays. I'm in love. I'm in love. And I don't care who knows it. Santa! I don't have anything to scream. I'm James Caan. I'm R.L. Stein. (laughs) 